Hello, hello everyone. The stream is starting. Surprise! I'm a VTuber now. <laughs> I've spent all weekend working on this model. She isn't everything I want yet. There's still some things I want to work with on her, but I'm really proud of her. She already has seven hours gone into her, so... <laughs> Also, like, the just chatting interface is new, too. Wait, why is that? Oh, God. Okay, where the fuck? Where the fuck are my interface points supposed to be? Okay, that's... Man, I thought I had this ready. Okay, that's ready. Chatting, not so much. Hold on. Where? Oh. Okay. And boop. Okay, that works better. I spent the weekend working on the art side of this, not so much the streaming side of this. So I'm kind of... New to this whole thing. <laughs> I'm really, I really kind of want to work on uh, a little bit more on her jacket and also on her collar. The ring on her collar kind of came out janky. So I want to fix that. Otherwise, like, I'm really happy with the way she turned out. It's a lot of fucking work to get her to this point. Oh, hi, Ron. I totally missed your message. What in the stream? Okay. Why... Why are you here? Turn that off. Okay. Well, this is really strange, having my avatar lighting up in the corner of my screen. Because I'm seeing it happen out of the corner of my eye. And some people know this. My brain works in a very specific way where if anything changes on any of my screens, I immediately notice it. It is a really awesome ability, and also it causes a lot of issues for me at times. We are going to play a bit of Path today. Even though it's still Affliction, not Necropolis. But we are going to play a bit of Path today. Because I have... I have it on good authority that something interesting is going to happen soon. And... That will happen after I set a few things up. Okay, let's see how Cat does with Path of Exile. Okay, Path Cat, over to you. Okay, so you're covering up a little bit, but not that much, really. I don't know if people actually care how much mana I have. I 
I really, really don't know if people care. Actually, people probably care more about what the fuck my main skill is than how much mana I have. So I'm going to move her over a little bit. There we go. I'm on my Hex Blast uh, Totemist. Okay, we are, I think, ready. We are going to do a few things right now. Uh, I'm just going I want to, like, kind of finish off the league. And to do that, we're going to do a few things. I have it on good authority that something interesting is going to happen any moment now. But before that... We have a Voidborn, well, not necessarily before that, but we have a Voidborn Reliquary key that I want to go through. We have some remaining stack decks I haven't actually checked yet. Could get a Mage Blood. <laughs> and I do kind of want to run the remaining Blood Filled Vessels I have, because, I mean, eh, they're fun. I kind of have the itch to play a bit of Path of Exile. And we're also going to look at the patch notes, I think. Hey, Swift. Okay. Let's open the remaining stack decks. I wanted to leave this for the stream just because I don't know if I get anything interesting. Inoculated. Innocent. Haunted. Drew's Resolve. Sea of Blue. Journalist. Emperor's Luck, and all Loyalty, Master Artisan, Start of Fate, Dungeon Master, Devil Influence Belt. That is actually worth something. Nice, that's worth like 30c. Prejudice. I don't think Prejudice is worth anything, is it? Not really. Doppelganger. Shard of Fate. You can go with the other Shard of Fate. Where the fuck that is. I don't know where you are. There you are. Oh, Dusty Memory. I think that's worth something. Yeah, it's about 20c. Not that it matters this late in the league, but... Eh. I'm doing good today. I'm always glad to be streaming. Inventor. Friend Straw. Varunastra? How are you today? We're in the 20 seat. Ronnie Battle Mage, Harvester, Destined to Crumble, Lover. Fuck. Joe Legacy, Seeker. Under Skies, Celestial Justicar, Thaumaturgist. Ooh. A little bit. First words, hubris and opulent. Last hope. Ooh, that might be... I think last hope's worth at least a few. Yeah. Brand new chaos. Dapper prodigy. Rain tempter. And finally, treasure hunter. Any sets? Of course, it's a set of Doppelganger. <laughs> Nothing interesting. Bye. You're not late. Just started. Actually, I can just sell these.
Uh, am I realistically going to sell any of this stuff before in the league? Probably not. I'll try to sell Dungeon Master, but the rest of them I'll just put away. Yeah, Dungeon Master is supposed to be like. Someone has 144 listed at 80, and that means they're a price fixer. So, this is probably worth closer to... I should put at least my 79 tab. We are going through the remaining few things that we have in Path of Exile to do for the League. And... Then we're going to go over some patch notes, and also one other thing that I am working on uh, behind the scenes. There it is. Well, there it is if it pays attention to me. I am colluding with a co-conspirator. No, my pillow fell off. No, my chair pillow. No, I need you. I need you for your pillow, goodness. Hello, yay. Okay. So, where are the bets? So, there is a rather large sale going on right now of more or less everything in the shop. But also, all the frogs are on sale. And I originally had no, like, particular affinity to frogs. But lately, I've started to gain one. <laughs> because of someone. Oh my gosh, I thought you were so rude. Yeah, frog. I didn't even notice we hit 40 followers. When the fuck did that happen? It must have happened last stream. Okay, I thought it was at 39. didn't work right <laughs> thank you so much ron for the 50 dollars with the subtitle of forks and that is because i have been informed that i need to buy one of each frog in the store now <laughs> 
Also, that's more than they cost. I told that that's not how much it is. Thank you for the extra little tip, too. Well, seeing as I'm going to be spending 270 points, I'm going to be getting a uh, one of the 300 point packs. And this one has mimics in it. Uh-huh. Okay. We have 344 points now. Thank you once again, Ron. I my my reaction isn't particularly extreme because I knew it was coming, but uh it is time to buy Forg. Deepwater Forg with his wonderful little helmet and he has a get up. And he's a backpack. And we're going to buy him. And we're going to get the hypnotic toad who glows. Yeah. We're going to equip him. Yeah, he fucking glows. Very hard to see. Yeah. Yeah. No. Oh, what? Yeah. Yeah. There you are. Yeah. Yeah. Fork. Okay. Sure. No. Uh. Forest one? And we have the Huntsman Toad, who has cool glowing back things. Like a sea anemone. And we have the Green Frog. Yeah, they're, they're, they're really cool when they're together. I'll be putting them out together. The Red Frog. He, he doesn't have anything special to him, but he's very cute. And we have the Ice Frog. He's very chill. Yeah. And then we have the Fire Frog. He's toasty. And we have the Blue Frog. He's, he, he's blue. I don't know what else to say. He's blue. Probably poisonous based on the color. We already had the royal one. And now we get the royal green frog. And the royal red frog. We have the tetra monarchy of the red, the blue, and the green. Okay. Wait, no, I forgot something. Shit. Um... No. Eh, eh. Stop it! Todd. We also need the Todd pet. Yeah. He is a toad. He's content. And finally, I have been afforded the Croaking Utility Flask. Which I am excited for. Toads will now explode out of me when I use my flasks. Okay, which one of my flasks has the lowest cooldown? The chemist flask would be the most common one, so flask slot five. Toad! Wait. Toad! Yeah, toads! <laughs> okay. Oh, it, cha it changes my flask icon too! 
There's a little tower in a bottle. <laughs> I assume, like, that can only work on one, right? Yeah. Uh, I wish... I wish it allowed me to use, like, use the same skin on multiple things, but it doesn't. Okay. We are going to have the Madcap and the Huntsman follow us. They're the most glowy ones. Yeah. Thank you again, Ron, for the Forg, uh, Union? Army? I don't know what to call it. Uh, pets. Life filters. I wish it wasn't so hard to see what's going on. Okay, frog. And other forg. And more Forg. And this Forg. And this Forg. And this Forg. This one. And this one. And another one here, I guess. I don't know. Okay. They're everywhere now! Look at them! We have our Royal here. Royal Blue. We have Royal Red. We have Green. He's running away. We have Blue. We have Fiery. We have Frosty. A group of frogs is called an army, a colony, or a knot. That's what people mean on the internet when they say they want to get knotted. They want to get a bunch of frogs! Oh, now I understand. I never understood what people meant when they said they wanted to get knotted. Now I get it. That is definitely 10, I know. Oh, oh some of them aren't 93s or 83s. Oops. Oh, then I only have six. Is there really a difference between... 81, 82, and 83? I didn't think there was. Hmm, okay. Okay, so... I'm gonna put this back. Yep. Yeah. And... Also these for two. Okay, we now have frogs everywhere. Look at them all! Oh my gosh, the flaming frog's very obvious when he runs around. I didn't real like, I thought you just placed them and they kind of just hung out. I didn't realize that they actually, like, travel around, like, yeah. Hi, Wenby. Welcome to the chat. Uh, this is a Templar build, actually. I currently have a Templar and a Witch build that I'm doing. Do I have... I don't remember, do I have a build guide on the channel or not for Trickster? I've got a lot of build guides. No, I think most of my build guides are Templar, actually, because I have this one, which is my Hexblast Totems. Uh, I call it the Orbital Strike build. I have my Arachnophobia build, which is a uh, witch build. It is uh, based on Arakali's Fang. I have Flame Surge. Um. Oh, oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, as a trickster, uh, 
well, okay, not as a trickster, but like as a uh, saboteur, something I really love and I found to be really effective, and I've been meaning to do a build video on constant, like for a while now, is my. Let me show you. Or, or it can just decide not to respond to me. Uh, excuse me. I have a very powerful trick, uh, saboteur build. Excuse me. While I force quit path because it has decided it just does not want to pay attention to me. I'm going to swap over to him. I've been meaning to do a build guide for him for a while. I just, for some reason, I drag my feet on build guides just because it's, I want to do them right and I don't know how to do them. So I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so this is the one here. I'm actually really happy with this one, because I think I ended up in, like, the 12-ish million DPS range with him. So this is a Firestorm Trickster. Specifically with mines. Uh, let me put back on my cosmetic skill. There we go. Let me show off the build. Because I actually really fucking love this build so much. Here, I'll just do a Drox, because, I mean, I can steamroll him. Ooh, okay, so let's self found that's, that's different. So I, my builds won't be able to help, uh, like these, this build will not be able to help you in solo self found. Uh, this is highly a uh, reliant on its particular uniques. Whoa. Okay. Lag. Oh yeah. I guess my, uh, system is like still trying to catch back up with, uh, all the new train changes and stuff. Oh, it's so such a mess. I need to. I forgot. I need to change my settings. Whoa. Okay. Hold on. Shrubbing effect. It's like, oh yeah, DirectX 12 is is totally working. That was DirectX 12. Okay, I'm going back to Vulcan for a second, because holy shit, I have never seen my character strobe like that before. Help me, Daddy Vulcan. Let's try this the fuck again. And this time... Don't be a butthead. Oh, no, it's, it's not your fault that DirectX 12 is not working the way it's supposed to with my system. It's potentially not even GGG's fault. Okay, we good? Whoa. Oh man, my frame rate is awful. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Okay, well, we're just gonna have to grin and bear the uh, bullshit for a moment. So, this particular build, 
the uh, Firestorm Trickster, it is expensive. I am not going to say that... What is going on? Yeah, as Han said, like, Path just kind of fucking does this sometimes. Like, it is... It is just an unknowable mess of... mess. On the great side, so this character is an uber boss killer. Uh, it can withstand just about anything, so even if I lag the fuck out, I'm probably not going to die. Let's actually set up properly. And slam. This is this is just like a standard uh, rare Drox map. Okay, I'm gonna dump a ton of mines down. And slam. Welcome to the jam. But yeah, even like a rare Drox, this this is a Drox with 40% of its life as energy shield. Yeah, no worries, Swift. Always happy to have people here. Even if like you're just hanging out, even if you don't chat very much, that's totally okay. I'm just happy to know that people are enjoying themselves. Sometimes people fall asleep to streams. I totally get that. There we go. Yeah, this, uh... This is like a fucking powerhouse of a build. It is really quite something. I love it to death. I have loved it to death for a while. Uh, there... It is... Its biggest weakness... Biggest weakness, I hate to admit it, is that it is expensive. It depends on how effectively you can make money, and how quickly you can get things, and the league itself, but... Aww, thank you! That's so cute! I didn't mean my, I didn't mean my stream specifically. <laughs> Oh, you're so nice. <laughs> I don't even remember what I was saying. <laughs> oh yeah, this build is extremely fucking expensive. I will not... I will not sugarcoat this. This is not a cheap build. This is a build where... This is not a league starter. Because, and I'll show you it in a second, you need to have three Power Charge Grand Spectrums, a Replica Tollfall, a Spell Critical Strike Chance, Evictions Entrapment, a Replica Inya's Epiphany, a Malachi's Loop, a Badge of the Brotherhood, and an Anathema. I can't actually go into how the build works in more detail. And honestly, I have been wanting to do so. I have not beat you before. Let me the password very quickly. And things are going to change a little bit. But, uh, oh, yeah. The, unfortunately, this is an expensive build. I, there's no way to sugarcoat that. Uh, so, well, the way I have it set up is I have Grand Spectrum Duels, so uh, plus one to minimum power charges. I have three of these. These duels cost me... Oh, no, that's... Oh, there aren't very many. Uh, these jewels cost me an average of about 12 div apiece. So I have about 36 div into this build just for my three Grand Spectrums. Then I just happened to get, like, really lucky, and I got a Megalomaniac with uh, Dodor's Gluttony, so punishment affects hexproof enemies and gives me Killing Strike. 
and Prismatic Carapace for extra max resistances. And I have a Forbidden Flesh and Flame with Opportunistic, which is... That... That on its own is, like, obscene. That's like a 50 div pair right there, so don't even... Don't even fucking worry about Opportunistic. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> Unless, like, you really know what the fuck you're doing. But this is just your standard mind build, basically. Uh, I have uh, a mixture of evasion rating and energy shield in this. It's got a nice little bit of energy shield going on. Not a huge amount, but some. Uh, I su Whenever I spell suppress spell damage, I get uh, energy shield back. Uh, my spell suppression chance is obscene, if I remember correctly. Yes, yeah, so my spell suppression chance is 71% and it's lucky. So it that generally will go up to about 100% spell suppression chance. 60% chance without flasks to evade. Tiny bit of physical damage reduction. Whole shit ton of life life regen, mana regen, and energy shield regen all at once. All my resistances are about 80. Chaos res is, eh, it's okay. I'm immune to ignite, I'm immune to shock, I'm immune to freeze, I'm... Partially immune to bleeding. I'm partially immune to poison. I have a high, high movement seed modifier. This is like a fucking powerhouse of a build. Like, if you are okay spending the money for it, this build will take you through uber bosses. I've killed uber shaper with this. I did never got really got the chance to check out some of the other uber bosses with them, but... Specifically, this uh, this build is a boss killer. It is so, so, so good. I've always been very happy with it. But minefield is for my leveling. Huh, my main one, right? I'm not insane. Oh yeah, I don't use minefield support at all. I forgot about that. It's one of the weird intricacies of this build is yeah yeah it's yeah that is not going to work <laughs> cuz to make this build function uh there's a few different things that you need together but the most important things that you need are you need to have Malachi's loop you need to have a toll fall which synergizes with the extra power charges you need to have the minimum power charges, so the Grand Spectrums, and you need the Badge of the Brotherhood. So you need, uh, like, all of those are required parts of the build. Without those, you, it just will not work. So this is not a solo self-found build, and I did League Start with this, but it's not an ideal League Start build either. Curiosity, do I have any, like, stuff to really show off its ability? Ooh, okay. Okay, no, I have a build for you, actually. Forgot about this one. Where's my zippy zappy? Zippy zappy. Very, very simple build to start with. I think I have it set up to be more expensive, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, minefield support, high impact mines, arc mine. Or just not arc mine, arc. I don't think I have this actually set up for... Oh, this is Pyroclast. That's what this one is. Oh, Pyroclast is also extremely good. Oh, this was Harvest League, so I have, like, a lot of, like, crazy shit going on here. But, uh, honestly, just Pyroclast Mines are really good. I would highly suggest them. A simple, uh, Pyroclast, Charged Mines, Minefield, Trap and Mine Damage, Combustion, and... What's a good other one? Um... 
It's on the tip of my tongue, I'm trying to remember. Control destruction. Just those six together, and you're fucking set. It doesn't really matter what else you have in the build. This is just this will make a powerhouse build. It doesn't real it's not really relying on items, just Pyroclast Mines has always been a very strong skill. Uh this took me to Uber Elder when I was not very good at the game. And I would highly suggest Pyroclast Mines in general, because like they're a meta skill. If you just want something simple, all you need is the gems. If it's ruthless and you don't have the ability to get gems specifically that you want, that's a problem. But just for normal solo self found, I've done Pyroclast Mines and I've done an Arc Mines as well. Both are very good. Arc Mines being high impact mines and arc. And then Pyroclast Mines being just the Pyroclast Mine scale. So that is what I would suggest if you want just like a very, very simple. Very simple builds. And then all you need to do is just stack elemental damage, stack elemental damage, stack fire damage, stack physical damage, stack whatever. Just keep just keep pumping your elemental damage as much as you can, your spell damage, your fire damage, etc. That's that that's really all you need. Not not really much else you, you need. <laughs> oh not control destruction. You want uh, fire penetration with the setup. Oh, this was one of the, uh... Oh, yeah, because this was Harvest. This was one of the crazy leagues where I was able to get 20% elemental damage and negative 9% to fire res nearby enemies on my helmet. That was fucking crazy. Annihilation? Yeah. Like, honestly, when you do go Pyroclast Mines, it is just... You need stat sticks. Just everything gives you stats. There's not a particular unique you really need. Like, all of them kind of just go together and give you little bits of buffs. Just just go with this. It, like, genuinely, if you're okay with going with meta builds, this is a good meta build. There aren't even jewel. You aren't even jewels or gems to so or, or Not gems. There aren't even jewels to socket into the, into the tree at all. Pretty much... Any uh, anointment will work. Whatever rings just happen to be good. Uh, whatever boots, gloves, helmet happen to be good. I have a tactician here for extra crit strike chance. Uh, you can replace that with basically anything else that happens to fill this lot, really. That gives any bonuses to critical strike chance or elemental damage. You can even just use it as a health belt. Like, that's totally fine, too. Like, Pyroclast Mines are built to be fucking insane. So, this would be my solo self-found push, would be to go for a uh, Pyroclast Mine build. I wonder how effective this build still is. Because I haven't touched this build in a little while. So it's not completely... It's not up to date. Things have changed on a bit. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can demonstrate some of its old power. Okay, this is a Searing Exarch Drox Ambush Nico Mission map. Rare tier 16. This, I mean, this does not, it's not too easy to break this build because it's really basic. Like, it's just really simple what you, what's put into it to make it work. And like, like, really, you can make this build so much better with unique items, but you don't have to. It's just good on its own.
it's a bit hard to like actually pinpoint things, but I mean, it's fine. Not a big deal. We'll say though, when you deal with a boss, there is you do need to make sure to set up wherever possible. And by set up, I mean like throw out the maximum number of mines you can and then just let them go all at once. Uh this build does rely, not completely rely, but it does benefit heavily on uh, having as many mines of the detonation sequence as possible. So if you can set up all the way to 23 first before you uh, detonate them all, that is the ideal. Oh yeah, I still use Smoke Mine on this because this was before Smoke Mine got nerfed. No. <laughs> no. Did I, did I not have my? I didn't have my my auras on. <laughs> I was like, oh, this build just doesn't have auras. No, this build has auras. I'm just not using them. <laughs> Let me go find uh, Daddy Drox and see uh, what we can say about him. Oh, no, not that way. But uh, if you'll mind a bit of uh, shameless self-promotion, if you subscribe to the YouTube channel, and the highlight channel specifically for build reviews, or not reviews, but like build guides, and follow the Twitch stream. This is where you'll find out about this stuff. I'm going to have some cool, cool stuff coming up in Affliction. Don't really know what build I'm going to be picking yet, but I have some plans. Don't really want to speak too much on them until... Ah, Brian King! Until I know what I'm doing. Fuck off, Brian King. But I do have plans to put out some build videos in the next, uh, in the coming weeks before Affliction. Or Affliction, no, before Necropolis. Because there are some really cool things that I've been seeing with Necropolis that I want to, like, actually look at with y'all. Have Strongbox has been triggering near me? I keep noticing Strongbox is triggering, and I'm like, no, I swear I'm not hitting them. That's weird. Oh, fuck. Now I remember how nice Pyroclast is. Oh, it's so, so beefy for, like, absolutely no fucking investment. It is such a good pick. That and Arc Mines. Arc Mines is really good for clear. It tends to uh, suffer on bossing DPS. Uh, Pyroclast does not. <laughs> Pyroclast is very good on bossing DPS. And pack clearing basically everything. Okay, right, set up. Knock him down. Okay, right, first boss down. Second boss down. Third boss down. First boss should be coming back up. Rude. 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 First and second boss are back up. First boss is dead. Second boss is dead. Third boss is dead. Yep. 75% quant is nothing for this, this build. Really isn't. Oh, I haven't even been using my fucking curse. I should remember to do that. That's kind of important.
<laughs> Drox is already at half. The type of burst damage this has is fucking crazy. Like, with, like, a, like just a couple seconds to set up, you are so set. And dead. So yeah, this would be my solo self on recommendation, is Power Class Mines. Very simple. Very easy. Can mold to basically any gear you have. Works great. It's not completely up to date for, uh... Uh... Affliction, so it's not up to date for Necropolis, but... I'll actually, I'll have to go through and, uh, check out, uh, the Path of Building again. Can I? Am I set up to open Path of Building right now? I think I am. The bigger problem with that is that I just changed my streaming setup a bit. I don't know how effective it's going to be. Oh, yep, my avatar is not even here. That's unfortunate. I need my avatar for avatar y things. There we go. What the fuck were we just doing? Power Clast. Pyro, 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 clast. There you are. Okay, no, no, we're done with this song. Hmm. Oh, this is the expensive... Why do I have a fucking Polaric Devastation? Polaric Devastation is obscenely expensive, isn't it? Am I, am I crazy? I think I'm crazy. This build is not exactly set up, but uh, in general, it is it sits around six million. Uh, if you actually, that's like just for general mapping DPS. If you can properly set up all your mines, you can spike it up to, well, okay, you can drop about 20 mines in general when you're, uh, when you're prepping, and then you're going to be able to, uh, keep up that 20 by, for three throws. So you'll be able to maintain the 8 million for three, four seconds, maybe? Which is, I mean, pretty good, considering that uh, the basic Elder has 32, 36 million health. So, four seconds of that is 32 million. So, technically, you can kill the Elder in four, five, six seconds. Just the basic Elder. Which, I know, isn't, like, the biggest feat in the world, but... I mean, it's a way to... It's a way to measure it. I'm going to have to actually go through and look at this build, like, to update it in time, but it is pretty damn good in general. Well, Polaric Devastation, like, even in Affliction right now, when there's not very many people around, it's only, like, a div. That's not bad. Okay, so it's probably closer to, like, ADC. During, like, on times. Oh, and I have Bull's Devotion, too. Right, 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 right. So, all of the uh, power charges I make become Endurance charges eventually. 
Legacy of Fury, which isn't all that reliable. Victario's influence. Okay, this is kind of a sleeper as far as uh, chest plates go. I don't think a lot of people understand how good Victoria's influence is for offensive mine builds. So, a lot of mines, it depends, depends on the mines, but a lot of mines, especially things like pyroclast mines and icicle mines, have auras. So they have the aura tag attached to them. So, if you have that socketed into Victoria's influence, you have a plus one there. You, because they reserve mana, have 45% increased mana reservation efficiency. You have increased aura effect. Like, it, it is an aura scale, so you have increased area of effect on it. Like, Victoria's influence is actually a really fucking good thing for offensive damage dealers, not just supports. Which is why I like to run it, definitely. And it's common enough that you can often double often get double corrupts if you're willing to pay like 10 div. So let's say you want to get, oh, I don't know, AoE gems and trap and mine damage gems. You now have a plus five chest plate. Oh, 5.7 million DPS? No, 8.4. Bring it up to the 20 mines you have after you set up. Spike to 12.2 million. That's why I like Pyroclast. Because it scales really well. And that's just with, like, one, one small thing added, basically. Oh, wait, this Malachi's loot. This has... Ooh, not Shimmeron, not Shimmeron, not Shimmeron. <laughs> Oh yeah, okay, this, this build isn't set up properly. I mean, okay, it's not set up wrong, per se, but, like... It's more expensive than it needs to be. We're not- we're just using Watcher's Eyes, right? Yeah, we're not using anything special. Okay. Yeah, this isn't even using Grand Spectrums. If you had Grand Spectrums to this, holy fuck. Let's see. Just curious what the difference is. Okay, Cobalt Grand Spectrums, Cobalt Grand Spectrum, Cobalt Grand Spectrum. That's plus nine to minimum power charges right there. Uh, we have, four, we have three, plus one is four, plus two is five, uh, plus two more, so four brings us up to seven. Where do we usually get all our power charges from? I can't, I can't fucking remember. <laughs> Oh, usually we add one to the helmet, right? That'd be eight. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna fuck with this a little bit. This isn't gonna look totally right. That's fine. Could possibly go wrong. Plus one to maximum power charges. Yep, that works. Brings us up to eight. Don't remember what else we use to get more power char more power charges in here. That's nine power charges. That's more than more than enough. Actually, wait, no, 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 no. No, that's not enough, because we are going to swap over to Tullfall, Replica Tullfall, because... Wait, no, not Replica Tullfall. What am I saying? Normal Tullfall.
So it'll give us a bunch of extra cold damage. It did just tank my damage. Yeah, that tanks your damage because the whole benefit of, like, Tullfall Malachi's loop is that you also have uh, Badge of the Brotherhood with it. Which will bring me up to 8 Frenzy Charges. 8 Frenzy Charges? Oh, right, 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 right. Okay, that's the problem. Is we have an anointment bringing us up to nine. Uh, inspiration. I don't remember what the name is of the... Whatever, power charges. Instability, there you are. Oh, wait, that's one of the ones we already have, isn't it? We need this one. Overcharge, right. Yeah, so this is like 13 and a half million right there. Oh, we should be at 10 mines because this is more of like our resting DPS when we're mapping. That's that's the thing, is if you use the Tullfall, Malachi's Loop, Badge of the Brotherhood, um, Grand Spectrum setup, it tends to add, like, 5-ish million DPS. It's just generally really good. Oh yeah, there's the new replica brother Brotherhood. Okay. Hmm. Actually, you know what? We're gonna go on a quick five-minute break. Everyone, get up, stretch, get water, so on. Mm. And we will be back in a few moments. And oh no, Swift. Spooky. Run from Spooky. <laughs> Arb.
Welcome back, everyone. Oh, shoot, it's in the wrong inventory, isn't it? Darn it. I shouldn't have swapped characters. Exciting time! We are going to do our very last reliquary key we've been saving up. Yeah, avoid one reliquary. Okay, what are we going to get in this reliquary? Okay, Onyx Amulets are very valuable. We wouldn't just get another Ash of the Stars, right? Like, that would be kind of stupid. That's a replica Dragonfang's Flight. That can be extremely valuable. Let's go check it out. I don't know whether to be happy or sad. <laughs> Plus three to all level of frost bl blink gems. So. Oh, it min rolled reservation efficiency. And its other rolls aren't amazing. So frost blink totems are actually like a big deal or they were this league. I don't know if that's going to be how that's going to go in general, but they... They were a big deal this league. And then about 50c. Honestly, though, like, if this was back a little while ago, this could have been a few div. Shiny Frost Blink. Dragon Replica Dragon. Yeah. Replica Dragon Fangs Flight. Shiny Frost Blink one. Pretty good. In any case, I'm happy to have it. It's another thing I don't have in my collection yet, so... Welcome to the collection, buddy! What time is it? Okay. We're going in here, baby. Oh, that's so beautiful. Hard to be unhappy with something that pretty. And it has, like, the silver to magmatic kind of look to it. It's really... I love that color set so Oh. Mm. <laughs> okay, let's do a few last, a uh, few last maps. We don't ha really have much time left in this league. Let's just throw some random shit out. Curses! I need curses. That will hurt me. Eh. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it will, but whatever. I can I can take I can take some anti curse, that's fine. Okay. Mission favors. This map is going to have a lot of mobs in it. <laughs>
Okay. Finish loading. Finish loading all the assets. Come on. You don't need to be lagging like this. That is unreasonable. Come on. There we go. Okay, so yeah, it's I can say for sure now my performance is now worse than before the update. I'm going to play with my settings, but my 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 game performance is now worse. It's probably just because I need to play with the settings, but I also am concerned because of how bad the uh, just the engine has been dealing with. Like, just trying to deal with the engine has been like such a pain in the ass this league and the last league. So it does worry me a tiny bit. Oh, that was easy. Kind of expected, like, a bit more resistance than that. Oh, it is so unhappy with me. The game is so unhappy with me. Oh, there was an elemental. I was wondering why it wasn't ending. Uh Hmm. What's my chaos res is like obscene, isn't it? I'm at 63. Yeah, you can have extra damage as chaos, I don't care. Sure, whatever. Okay, no, not you. Okay, I mean to cold damage, can poison. In shock. Uh, I don't really want always crits. That sounds awful. How about like not that? It's against things can't be critical hits. Oh, well, I don't really like that. That's kind of kind of crappy. Let's, let's move the last one. Over there. It's not in a problematic spot. Try to avoid the, like, Slayer Cull on all of the minions. It's kind of fucking awful. That's one thing that minions do, that, like, just enemies do not need. They do not need Culling Strike. I don't really need to pick up very much. Might as well pick up the stack decks. Oh, sulfate intoxication. I was really su surprised to see sulfate intoxication didn't get like nerfed or anything or changed in any way. Like a lot of Atlas passives got reviewed. They they didn't touch it. Yeah, Pact of Energy didn't even get touched. Which is kind of a surprise to me. But I mean... I think it helps people, like... I think it helps people who are... Uh... I don't think it helps the top end as much, and bringing up other people up easily to the top end isn't really... a bad thing. <laughs> 
just helps make mapping a bit smoother. Also, speaking of smooth mapping, I really wish this wasn't dig. Dig. Oh my gosh, is the, uh, whatever it's called, is the Enslaver going to be in a... Okay, for a second I thought the Enslaver was going to be in a ritual. <laughs> that would have been fucking awful. And down to 60%. And down to 30%. And dead. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> gotta say, this build kind of just destroys bosses in general. Doesn't really surprise me that the uh, constrict or the enslaver was a joke. Frogs, frogs everywhere. More frogs. Frog harder. must frog harder. Now where's that last... There's the last ritual. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. There is a lot of things in here. Why am I picking up Kartar versus Chisels? I don't need them. I'm not going to use all mine by the end of this league. Oh, I don't like that. My mouse isn't responding very effectively with potions. Having to hit the button twice to get it to work. I don't like that. Oh, I just killed Dodre. Why is she here? Wait. Ooh. Random exile. Oh, right, because I added the, uh, the fucking, uh, blithful vessels, that's why. The no puncture. Uh, what else do we need? I mean, we don't really need much at this point, being that the league is basically over, so I guess currency. Be random currency. Oh, yeah. Ooh, give me a random item. So apparently all sextants are going to be changed at the end of the league now, because sextants are being removed. Sextants are being removed, charge compasses are being removed, compasses are being removed. Uh, what else? Master missions are being removed. I like the fact that they're really starting to uh, refine the systems in this game now. Like, removing the sextant system and the Master Mission system, and then bundling it all into the Scarab system, I think is a good idea. I think that's great. Like, we don't need to have so many conflicting systems in this game. The world is more shit new players need to learn. And we don't need that. Like, this game is amazing, and I want more people to be able to play it. I want to be able to be like, hey, you want to get into this game? It's, uh, it's pretty complicated, but, like, it's fairly streamlined. Come play it kind of thing. I don't want to be like, yeah, this game's a fucking clusterfuck. I, do you have, 
You have like a couple weeks off work. <laughs> I tell me of a mess it is right now. Anything interesting? I can alter distant memory. A beachhead. Beachhead. Give me some. Give this beach some currency. I should probably have V-Sync off. I don't really need V-Sync on generally. have all that many settings on. Like, why the fuck am I just getting destroyed by this game graphically? <laughs> I mean, like, I know I only have a 50, a Radeon 5700, but, like, not that bad. Let's see back in path. I haven't touched path very much in like I don't know since th since I stopped like streaming it really. I mean, there's not really been much of a reason for me. Affliction ended, and I was like, eh, I'm tired. Or at least my affliction ended, I should say. I just got really where I wanted to go in the league. That's just that. Gary Valve. Don't need. Seriously? That's not enough to mess with me. You're going to try a bit harder. Okay, boss fight. Ah, uh, I love the look. I love the look of the portal. It's so cool. Just wither on top of the portal. I mean, I probably don't even need to be that careful about these things, but, like... Eh. Oh, crit resistant. That's why that one's not dying. Of course, crit resistant. Let's build. 
We uh, can do tens of millions of DPS by sitting here. Oh god, I have to have to put down my totems. <laughs> okay, let's not get too complacent now. How about that? We. Ah, give me something different to listen to. Come on. It's the big dude. Hey, dude. Give me a Harbinger unique, dude. 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 Good. Scintillating commentary, I know. <laughs> Was that a crit and crit resistance aura I saw? The fuck? Callous mask piece. Ah. <laughs> Don't know if that has any value. Uh, I mean, that's the... That's the Mask of Storms thingy. It gives you, like, Ice Bite and Generate, I think. I assume it's not worth anything. First Mask of the Storms. We're somewhere between 5 Chaos and 5 Chaos. Put it down there. Wow. We have an ancient orb. Wow. Do we have any crappy belts? It's ain't crappy. Oh, by the way, I have a mage blood. I got that, like, right, right near the end of playing. <laughs> I still haven't used it for anything. That's a good mage blood too. I could totally use it for something, but like, I don't know. I just wanted to have it. I should put it in like the special slot. Here, I'll use bound fate. Give me another mage blood. That's an ascent from flesh. You, you can go fuck yourself. You wanted what from me? Who are you? What's going on? 750. Uh, stop moving. Thank you. <laughs> They're like, she's having trouble. I'll help. And you know what? That's fair. I was having trouble. Give me a set of snap. Right, I need to... Wither does not do damage. I need to actually put out fucking totems. That helps. Oh, oh that's ignite resistant, not crit resistant. I read power charge on crit and ignite resistant, and it's like, ah, oh, crit resistant. Oh. Did I look at what the modifiers are on this map? Yeah. So I really shouldn't pick up any maps unless they're like cool. Because at this point, I'm just like they're just gonna be shit I have to sort in standard. A Swift. Give 
Come here, since it's daddy. Okay, yeah, yeah, I don't care. Just just go away, please. Thank you. I I'm busy. Busy woman. What is this? Remove bleeding with the flask. Attack hits against bleeding enemies chance to blind. Or avoid element to elements while phasing. War cries can generate rage for power. Oh. oh god. What is with this engine? It has gotten worse. Eh. No. I... Oh, that's what's going on. For some reason... For some fucking reason, my computer likes to lock up occasionally. Try this again. This is worth an amount of money. What is that amount of money? Here, I'll put it in there. Give me 10c for it, maybe. I don't know. I don't really care anymore. Jump scares stuck. That's why I don't play games, like... That's why I don't play games, no. <laughs> that's why I don't play horror games. Are there any, like, easy challenges I could complete? <laughs> yes, apparently! <sighs> How the fuck do you make boots of movement speed? Oh yeah, Quicksilver Flask. Sure, I'll waste that. Why not? I'm at 19 challenges. I could just make, like, a, a sapphire ring and boots the move and speed, and I'm at 20. <laughs> Might as well do it. I... Uh, I just don't give a shit about... God, what is with this league? I just do not give a shit about... I just don't give a shit about challenges. Like, I used to. I really, like, they used to be, like, this big fucking thing I just love so much. I just don't fucking care. Movement speed. Yay, movement speed. Okay, goodbye. Finding jobs is awful. I agree. I'm also job hunting. It sucks. Fortunately, it's going to get even harder to stream once I start job hunting, but... Ugh. I mean, we all need a job, unfortunately. Not really much we can do about that. Yeah. I mean, that's what a job is. Like, you go to work so that you can do your hobby when you get home. Oh, that was a really easy way to make gloves. No, that was the tier two. Okay. Be possessed by a tormented spirit. Defeat a map of possessed by three tormented spirits. You know what's a really hard hobby to maintain without a job? Smoking crack. I don't know why that was the first thing that came to my mind. <laughs> oh no, you, you, let me guess, you have a hobby that's much worse than smoking crack. You do miniatures, don't you? Fucking Warhammer is grossly overpriced. Uh, do I don't want to do a Dory's. I could do a Dory's. That wouldn't be too bad. 
Sacrifice. I mean, I could run. I could do something there. It's not a big deal. Airsoft. Oh, God. Yeah, that's one of them. Do I want... I could. I mean, that's pretty easy to do. How much is Haradori's right now? Also, did I just, like, buy one or something already? Because, like, that does seem like something I might buy so that I have. I don't even see it in the list. Oh, yeah, that's because it's not required anymore. Let's find Dory. Let me guess, 100 div. Oh my god, I was joking! 100 div for a fucking Doriani's Machinarium. Why do they do this? Hmm. Yep. Expensive hobby. Maybe it's, like, easy for me. I don't really want to spend, like, a... I don't really want to spend too long. If there's something easy, I'll do it. Follow your heart, my dude. That's all I can say. Also hydrate. That's also important. It's always nice when you can reward people for their kindness. Give me something fun. No. 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 You. Nope. Might as well burn these. There's no real reason to hold on to them. Wondering if I can get, like, obscenely lucky and get, like, a fucking Dariani's or something. I mean, the chance of that's pretty low, but, like. I mean, there's no harm trying. For the, like, four seconds it'll take me. Yep, and jobs suck. So hard to find a job that will treat you like a human. Especially for those of us who are younger, like, 
me. I mean, I'm 30. I'm not, like, younger, younger, but, like, anyone, like, below their 40s at this point is kind of struggling money-wise. Just only those of us who are, like, really fucking lucky get to live on our own. That's fair. I mean, here, you want some bad advice? There's one place that's always hiring. Grocery stores. You know why grocery stores are always hiring? Because they're abusive. And awful. But they are always hiring. If you're really getting a bind, there's always grocery stores, and if you're Canadian, Tim Hortons. Okay. Don't want to play that song. Don't want to play that song. I'm going to go fishing on the long shot that I can find a Dorianis. Oh, housekeeping. That is a job, it's true. That is, in fact, a job. I mean... That's the thing. If a job is ass... I mean... Make money where you need to make money. All I can really say. That is true. You can definitely get money out of it. And hotels are another place that are pretty much... That are, that are very often hiring as well, especially for housekeeping. Because no one wants to do it, because it is stressful and icky. I remember a friend telling me a story, like, like, telling me stories about them working in housekeeping. It's just like, the fucking weird things that you might encounter while doing that, like, just cleaning, cleaning up a room and just finding things that you wouldn't really expect to find and would hope you wouldn't find. <laughs> yeah, four to five hour shift, yeah, that's fair. You want to hear a super fucking weird story? Super, super fucking weird story. There. I'm going to go to the Just Chatting stream screen for a moment for it. 
Uh, it's a little bit gross, but it, okay, it's fairly gross. So if you don't want to hear it, uh, when I just mute me until I am off the just chatting screen. So a friend used to work in housekeeping, and they were going through one of their rooms, just doing just like a like a normal day, and. Oh, see, here's the thing. <laughs> that's not, like... That's something that can just happen, what you're describing. I'm talking about something that's... I'm t the thing I'm going to tell you is deliberate. For some reason. They happen to open up the closet. And for some reason, someone had shit their underwear and left the shitty underwear in the closet, and then checked out. Can you imagine a scenario where that happens? Like, what happened to cause that? Yeah, like, and then you just leave that for someone? In the closet? What, what happened? Hurt you, my friend. I just, yeah, no, why not trash it? I don't know. Okay, I'm back, back not saying terrible things now. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. People are very hard to understand. See, the thing is, like, I don't even want to make an assumption necessarily because. There are so many weird fucking reasons why the aforementioned story could have happened. And I can barely imagine them. But I know that there is at least one good reason, or like, not good reason, but like, there is one reason out there that if the person explains to you probably would make sense. And that horrifies me more. <laughs> Is that there's just like, it's not always just malice. Sometimes there's just bizarrity in the world. And that's something that like, I respect it kind of like you respect a bear. You kind of just leave it alone because you don't want to poke the bizarrity. It'll, it'll run its course. Best to, best to leave the bazaar alone. I know the chance of me getting a Dorianis Machinarium this way is, like, so fucking low, but, like... Uh, they disposed of the situation. And cleaned up any relevant things. And it went down in history as a horror story. <laughs> just, just that. Like, what else do you do? What else do you do besides move on with your day? Because you have two more hours till guest check in. And 15 more rooms to clean. Yep. People, people are, people are so bizarre and like, I just, I just can't imagine like, like the justification for that situation appearing. I just really can't. It's just, but like, 
in someone's mind, and it's almost certainly not malice, because it's usually, you can usually attribute things to ignorance, you should attribute things to ignorance, not malice, because usually that's what they are. But what happened to them? What situation put them together? Like, what situation were they in that they, that this was their reasonable decision? That this, in their mind, was the thing they considered a reasonable choice to them. What happened? Like, that, that is just something that's, like, so mind-boggling to me. Because, like, this is... Yes. Yes, like an adult. Yes, th this was an, a decision an adult made. One or more adults. And that's just... Bizarre. That, like... And w when I said that they had a good reason before, I didn't mean they have a good reason. I mean... Uh... You're... <sighs> Nightbot, I really do not like you sometimes, because you do shit that I don't agree with. Yeah, it ate night by ate your message. Because it was in caps. And I I think your caps are justified here. I do. Which is stupid of Nightbot. I think typing in caps once shouldn't be justification for it to to just kill a message. Like, come on. Also, the reason why I'm buying Sextants, if anyone's wondering, is because Sextants, when the uh, change happens, are going to be turned into, uh, um... When the change between the leagues happen, they're going to be turned into Veiled Scarabs. So, basically, you get a random Scarab out of it. And I figured it'd be fun to, like, I don't know, take, like, 500 Veiled Scarabs and see what we get. Be a cool video, I think. So I'm just collecting some where I can, because I know I already have hundreds in uh, in standard. Yeah, it's just it's just so hard to imagine like what brings a person to that situation that they feel that their decision. That they rationalized that decision as the best course of action in that moment. Consider that, that when people make their stupid choices, like, it's not, it's, it's not often not just them just not thinking about it. Like, they often rationalize those stupid choices. Yeah. God, this reminds me of, like, some of the weird retail stories I have. Because I used to work in, um... Basically, it was like a part of the OCS, the Ontario Cannabis Store. Or Society, I don't know what you'd call it. Um, so, like, I worked, like, selling retail cannabis. And that brought in some interesting characters. Like, some really interesting characters. I remember, uh, because we sold, um... We sold... Let's call them cigarettes. We sold containers of cigarettes that were already set up for people that they could use whenever they would like. And one day, a man walks into the store. And that man walks up to our display. The display has things like glassware and trays to 
do hobby projects on. And more decorative glassware. And things to hold your cigarettes. And they picked up a candle, which was meant to remove the odor of smoke in an area. So it's like meant to cover it up and like eat the, the smell, basically. Now, they picked up this candle, and they turned to me and my coworker, and they deadass said, How much for this pack of cigarettes? And we said, Sir, that's a candle. And they put it down. You know what they did next? They picked up another candle. <laughs> Do you see where this is going? <laughs> and they asked again. I said, nope, that's still a candle. After that, we showed them to where you order uh, your products from. No, no, it's true. <laughs> you don't... I don't think you understand how insane people are and some people are just i'm sorry to say it some people are really really so incredibly stupid oh yeah definitely like well actually i i, I shouldn't even say definitely because there's a good chance that that was a completely sober man <laughs> like imagine that a completely sober man is just like oh yes candle can i smoke this candle I mean, you can light it on fire. I, in fact, it's meant to be lit on fire. But I would not smoke that for a purpose of consuming some form of something. And like, and see, the thing about, about weed in Canada is like, it's, it's legal. It's been legal for a while. And... That has had many interesting effects. Generally, from what I've heard, those, those effects have been positive. But it also has had some weird effects. One of the weird effects is that people don't really understand when you sell legal cannabis, when you're selling a legal product, that you are not a drug dealer. What's what is what's uh what am I trying to say here when I say you're not a drug dealer? What I mean is that you do not have a selection of different types of drugs. You carry cannabis because you are a cannabis store, and cannabis is what is legal. And there will be people who will come in and be like, "Can you sell me cocaine under under the shelf? Like like I wanna I wanna see your secret menu." And I'm like, dude. We sell weed. There is no secret menu. And they're like, but, but you deal some on the side, right? Like, no. Do you see that camera there? Point up in the corner. And that one? And that one? And that one? And that one? There's seven different cameras just on me in that one area. There was in a, like, 600 square foot area, there was, like, 12 cameras. Always recording, always being sent to a security office off-site, always recorded on-site as well. Like, like, hun like, tons of redundancies, like, you can't get away with doing illegal shit there. And they're like, but, can you sell me crack? And of course our answer is, are you on crack? Because that must be what you're thinking. And then there's the people that are like, well, I know you don't sell crack, but you have crack pipes. And I'm like, no, why would we sell crack pipes at a cannabis store? We sell cannabis. We sell things for cannabis. Of course we sell things for cannabis. Like, what the fuck? What the fuck do you think you're doing? I mean, like, you know the reason why they're they're asking those questions is because like they're they're already they're already blitzed out of their mind. 
Like, they don't fucking know what, what they're doing. They don't realize the fact that, like, they are admitting to... Uh... Cannabis is. Crack is not. Most things are not. The only difference with Canada is that... Cannabis is legal in addition to cigarettes. Like, it's not... It, it's like, they're sold like cigarettes. It's not a big thing. And people act like it's this illicit thing, but it's not an illicit thing anymore. This is you going to a fucking pharmacy or to a corner store and buying cigarettes effectively. But they'll be like, but where are your crack pipes? And to that I answer, no. As far as I can tell, it seems to be a decent idea to legalize it. Or, well, okay, let me phrase that. There, There's a bunch of different ways to look at the problem, the situation, and I'm not going to weigh in on it because, quite frankly, I don't feel like I, I am competent enough to be able to weigh in on it. But I wouldn't. one thing I will say is that people are fucking weird. That's what I will say. And there's, like, this one other really weird situation that you come into where you're selling glassware, and that glassware is for cannabis. Can you use it for other things? Unfortunately, yes. Yes, you can. And the importance of that is that they will use it for other things, and those other things will damage the glassware in ways that cannabis won't necessarily, and then they'll try to return the glassware. Or they'll use it normally, like once or twice, and then use it for something else, and then they'll try to return the glassware. And you know what? One thing about different types of drugs is they leave residue. And if you were to, let's say you return a piece of glassware that has cocaine on it. We are now in possession of cocaine. I, am, I shit ye not. Which means that we cannot take returns from these things if they have some sort of other substance on them. And people would still try. And it's like, dude, dude, we would go, like, we wouldn't go to jail, but like, it's not like we can, not like we can just take the piece back and send it back to the manufacturer and be like, hey, this was defective. Because, like, sometimes they are genuinely defective. We can't do that. Because it has something illicit on it. <laughs> you can't just, you can't just do that. But, like, oh my god, people's decisions are interesting. That is one thing I will say, like... Retail, you will encounter a lot of weird fucking people. Cannabis retail, oh boy. You will find a lot... Honestly, cannabis retail, people are calmer. Like, people are cooler a lot of the time. Because they are intoxicated a lot of the time. And they just kind of chill out. And if you need to take an extra moment or two to, like, do a transaction, they don't even notice. That's kind of nice. But oh boy, does it invite the fucking weirdos. And yeah, it's, uh, it does have some benefits for, um, for mental health issues. It does. And that is something that is currently being looked up a lot. And it is, there's a lot more going on with that now. This person want one or two fragments. Okay. What's the funniest thing I saw there? 
Um, the funniest thing I saw there was a fully grown man, like, in his mid-30s, like, fucking, like, run in, like, blasting through the door. And, like, run up to the counter, like, Do you sell crack pipes? I need it for a friend. And I'm like, No! We don't! <laughs> They're like, Then they walk, they, like, power walk over to a display, they point at something. Can this be used for crack? Like, uh, we're not allowed to advise any use of our products for illicit substances or anyone else's. As close to a sprint as you can be while still walking, if that makes sense. Like a fucking power walk. Like, this person was obviously very intoxicated and it was not on cannabis or anything legal. Because the way that they were act, they were acting manic. And as soon as they figured out that we didn't have anything for them, they just, like, fucking turned sprint and, like, just, like, went out, jumped in their car, just, like, sp like, practically spun in the parking lot and just, like, shot off. It's like, okay, okay, I guess this is fucking, I guess this is just, this is today, I guess. It, uh, it is so I don't know I I don't I don't know I don't know uh I don't know people are just fucking weird and they will I don't know. <laughs> People are weird. I don't know what else to say besides that. Like, it is so bizarre interacting with people like that. And honestly, like, it's kind of scary. Because, like, I know I'm safe. I know I'm safe. I'm in a weed store. You want to know the safest place to be? Is in a police station or a weed store. The security is maxed. Like, you... You're safe in there, but oh boy, is it like bizarre. Oh, oh no, I forgot about this. Okay, no, there was one weirder situation than that. And this was the only time that someone managed to steal something. And it was on my shift, and I was really pissed off about that. But here's what happened. They came in with someone else, obviously their husband. And she was, like, asking me a bunch of questions about things. And, like, she was asking a lot of questions. Like, like a lot of questions about a lot of different things. And, like, it was kind of hard to keep up with her, but I was trying. Because, I mean... I mean, you work in customer service, you're trying to keep up with the person. And um, they're, like, checking out the different things, and then they brush into something, and they knock it off. And I turn, and I'm like, oh, shit. And I, like, go to, I go to, like, fix it. And I turn around just in time to see her sprinting out the door. And I'm like... What? And as the door was closing... I briefly saw the glint of glass under her coat. And I'm like, you did not just steal glassware off the counter in front of me by making a diversion. You did not just fucking do that. Obviously, had to call the police, had to go through the whole fucking rigmarole. It was a bizarre scenario. And you know what? That's not that's not it. It's not over there. More happens. I tell my supervisor who's on staff. The person just whoever like the person who is managing me at that moment in this store. 
Um, and they knew the person. And now let me set the scene. This is like 8 p.m. at night. It is fucking pouring rain. It's in the summer. My supervisor, and you never do this. Never fucking do this. This was the stupidest thing I've ever seen someone do. I swear. She sprinted out the door across the parking lot, across the road, and got into, like, an altercation with this woman. <laughs> In one of the adjoining parking lots. <laughs> and, like, tried to get the stuff back. And this is exactly what you were trained not to do. You do not... You are not... Your safety is is way more important than any piece of merchandise in the store. It doesn't care if some... It doesn't matter if someone steals literally everything in the store. Your safety is more important. You do not run off the premises and chase down perpetrators who may or may not be armed. And she got back, like, apparently one of more products that she had... But not all of them. And... And I explained this to the police afterwards. And I'm just like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Why do I work here? <laughs> oh, it just was so... Like, that's just one of those times where... Uh, I just don't understand... any of the human beings involved and why they did what they did. That, that's just it. I don't. And I forever will never understand what happened in that scenario and why they did what they did. Um, they got arrested later. I will add that. But, like, it was... It is such a... <sighs> Retail is weird when it's not about this stuff. When it's not, like, restricted products. It is... I don't know. Like, it just genuinely, it is a re weird fucking job. Working with retail. Because you're working with people, and people are weird fucking creatures. And you will encounter shit like that. You work retail. You probably won't have someone steal shit in front of you. That's unlikely. But holy fuck, is that a thing that is, like... My god, it just people. I haven't played it. I haven't been playing at all during this. I've just been ranting. Because holy fuck, is this just like. It consumes my being. Just like just discussing how insane this is. This is not like. This is a full attention explanation. <laughs> Gosh. Need to drink water. Got a, a bit passionate there, because holy fuck, it is just... <sighs> Some days, like, I would just go home and just, like, sit down and be like... What happened? I went to work. Then, like, a whole shit ton of things happened. Now I'm here. Yeah. Yeah, it is crazy. People are crazy. I mean, there are weirder... There are weirder things that happen. In weirder places. That store happened to be a little bit out of the way. 
I mean, as out of the way as you can be in Ontario. And because of that, we had uh, a more limited number of people who were coming in. There were other places closer to more urban centers, so people would go to those instead. But it was... It's hard to describe, like, how crazy people are sometimes. I just... Oh. Yeah. 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 That's another beachhead. I'm not going to run that, though. It's not worth it. Ah, oh, replica cortex. Or no, that's not replica cortex. It's normal cortex. It's replica cortex. Oh, yeah, those are separate. I forgot. Okay. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, and my corpse tab. These are probably going to be pretty valuable soon in non-standard, in uh, standard, because corpses are going away. I item as corpses are, which is sad. That, that makes me very sad, actually. Because itemized corpses were a better system than our current system. Were they a good system? No. There are better ways to do it. But they are just so far above the system of having to go find things. And if you unsocket your gem or you switch weapons and your gem is in your weapon swap and just kills all your specters and you have to go find them all again, that's not a good system. Spectre system is bad. This spectre system is, is okay. But we'll see what happens. So I'm kind of sad about that change there specifically. That's going to be that's going to be a sad moment, unfortunately. There's actually also one other thing that I'm going to be really sad about when they switch uh, when we switch leagues. Let me show you. So, one of the things I really liked about this league, and it is the reason why I played this character specifically. This is my Arachnophobia character. She uses the Raise Spider skill. So, when you... When you kill something, it casts Raised Spider, which takes two corpses. Or sorry, it takes one corpse in the area, and it creates two spiders out of the corpse. Two spectral spiders. And they last for, like, 30 seconds each. And you can have up to 20 of them. And you need 10 corpses to do that. So, generating the corpses, not too hard. Killing things to trigger the spiders, kind of a pain. The way that we've, we've been doing it is we have been using... Where the fuck are my writhing jars? Uh, why did my trinket slot? Whatever. I don't care. <laughs> writhing jars. Two enemy writhing worms escape the flask when used. So this gives you two kills. Which eats two corpses, which triggers four spiders per usage. And it has two usages before it has to regenerate anything. They both, like, each one does. That was how we would do that, and then those small amount of spiders would kill a few things, and that would help maintain the loop. Now, with Affliction, and this is not going to be a thing anymore, which makes me 
so incredibly sad because I don't know why they didn't make this into a gem is we have Penance Mark. It is part of, and I'm not Penance Brand, for people who, who know who know Penance Brand, I'm not talking about Penance Brand, I'm talking about Penance Mark. It comes specifically from the uh, Warlock secondary ascendancy that you get through Affliction. You get through Choir of the Damned. What this does is when you curse something, if you hit it, so if one of your minions hits it, it spawns multiple enemy phantasms each time. And er you can kill those very easily because they have like no they have like no health, basically. They can't really do much damage or anything. They they just die instantly, basically. You spawn three of them each time. Every time you hit it, you spawn three. Let's say your minion can hit, like, three times a second, but it doesn't do much damage, like like your other random support minions. That is enough to trigger nine phantasms, which is enough to trigger nine ray spiders, which will create 18 spiders. In one second. Without the use of your flask clots at all. Penance Mark made this build feel like a real build. Here, I'll penance mark one thing. I have 20 spiders now. Oh. It takes nothing if you have penance mark to be able to do this. And admittedly, it is much easier to map with this build than it is to do bosses. Bosses is where this build crashes, because it has great bossing DPS. The problem is maintaining enough corpses and kills that it can do something. Penance Mark fixed that. You need to hit a boss 500 times so that, uh, and like it takes several minutes to go through the fight? That's okay, because every time you hit him, he's going to spawn phantasms. And those phantasms are going to give you trigger on kill effects. They're going to trigger your spiders. And they're just going to keep up your minions in general. It's a very nice and just generally enjoyable system, in my opinion. For some reason, they have not made this into a gem, as far as we know yet. They just didn't. And I don't understand that choice. It's not like it's giving anyone a bunch of extra power or anything. Because what it is doing is it's taking up your curse slash uh, hex or your curse slash hex slash mark slot. And instead of giving you damage, you are using it to maintain your abilities. And that is usually considered bad for a non-spider build. Because you like the on-kill effects are required for this, but in other builds, just add more damage. It makes way more sense to just add more damage. But for some reason, they did not port this to an actual skill gem, despite the fact that it would be very, very, very helpful. There is a possibility that they just haven't unveiled it yet, that it's coming and it's just not a thing yet, or maybe they forgot about it. I really do hope they consider adding it again, because honestly, it made this build feel enjoyable. Because I've tried to do this build before with just writhing jars. It sucked. It sucked so much. And I'm not going to make a build guide on this build for next league. Why? Because I don't think this build is worth doing without Penance Brand. I don't. I just don't. It's not enjoyable. It isn't.
So, to recap, we need Penance Brand so that we can function with builds like this that have on-kill effects. To, like, that are required to trigger. It makes the build so much more enjoyable, it's way better than using the Writhing Jars. This is just a fun way to play. And I, this is, I would highly, highly, highly be... I, just, I really would ask GGG, just like, take a moment and consider adding Penance Brand to the game as an actual gem. It doesn't overpower anything, it just makes certain builds like this one particularly useful. And you already have the skill in the game, you already have the functionality, you literally just need to tie it to a gem. It doesn't even need to have a bunch of levels. You can just give it a max, le max one level gem. That's it. And that's fine. And it would be great. And that would make Ray's Spider builds enjoyable to me. As it is, they will not be enjoyable to me once it's late ends. At all. And I will not do it again until we get some sort of something like this. Because I don't consider Writhing Jars to be an acceptable substitute. That's really just it. The other option is that somehow they just make a raised spider skill, like a skill gem. But in the meantime, I would just ask that they would consider making the penance mark, because I feel like it opens up a lot of good build options, and I really would, I would really highly suggest it. But, yeah. I do like this build a lot. Oh, actually, fun thing. Here, Convocation. They're changing Convocation for the next league, which, if we had Penance Mark, it would really make me want to play this again. Because... Holy shit, is this great. So, Convocation, instead of le like having a normal leveling 1 to 20, it only is one level now. And instead of regenerating 0.7% to 1.6%, it just regenerates 2% of life per second, flat. And it just works like that. No, no bullshit hassle. It's just a simple, nice little buff, nice little thing for moving your, your stuff around. And they also made it. There was something else they did. They made, they attached it to something. Where is the patch notes? Where are the master patch notes? Content update. There we are. Boop, 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 boop. So I'm going to look at the uh, patch notes with y'all. Because I do want... I want to show you the convocation change, and I want to look at the other stuff, too, with y'all. Because, honestly, they're, the patch notes are really great. And, I mean, want to go through them. Okay, patch notes. Okay, convocate. I really like the increase to uh, the amount of life per second that it regenerates. It's really nice. It's just, it's such a small, small difference, 
but it means so much, in my opinion. It gives... If, if I understand correctly, it gives you and your minions the uh, per little percent life buff. I don't know for sure, but like 2% life is actually a fair bit when you're talking about a, let's say, a golem with 70,000 health. That's a lot. I mean, 1% of 70,000 is 700. So that would be 1,400 life regenerated a second. So that's pretty fucking good. Where are the other changes? Ah, yes, here it is. So you can now roll Convocation as a skill on minion wands and shields. So you don't have to have it socketed into your gear anymore. You can just have it now. You can just have it on a piece of gear as an affix. A suffix, specifically. It's so nice. I love that. I love that so much. Okay, let's just go through the patch notes in general. I am going to skip a bunch of shit that I don't find interesting. Just straight up. Okay, to summarize the Necropolis Challenge League changes, basically, collect corpses, bring to graveyard, bury, grave gra bury things in graveyard, exercise, exercise ghosts, fight, get loot. That's Necropolis. There is a much better way to explain it than just this this text. If you actually if you go watch the actual video, uh, we're not going to do that right now. I want to look at the other smaller changes because to me those smaller changes are actually a really big deal. Okay, new intelligence support gem, sacred wisps, support attack skills that can be used with wands, support attack skills that can be used with wands. Uh, summon Sacred Wisps is triggered when supported when that yeah. summon Sacred Wisps is triggered by supported skills to summon Sacred Wisps, which use the triggering skill when you do. Okay, that is that is a very complicated way of saying triggers summon Sacred Wisps on on weapon attack. That's cool. New time minion like that. We have the automation gem, which is the biggest fucking deal in this game and in this update. While this is active, supported spells will trigger when their cooldown is over. Supported spell skill, this only supports spell skills that are instant and have no reservation. Cannot be used with totems, traps, mines, or minions. What this means is Molten Shell, Steel Skin, um, Arcane Cloak, Detonate Mines. What else? What other, what other fucking instant spells are there? I'm blanking on them right now. There, there's a lot of instant spells. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Let's put it that way. There's a lot of instant spells. And before we used to use cast when stunned or cast when damage taken, but they were never very reliable. This will now just automatically trigger them when their cooldown's over. That, that's great. Because you won't be able to put stuff on your left click anymore. Hi, Gamers Dreamer. Dr Gamers Dr Dreamer? Welcome to the stream. Thinking Storm Rain, Juggernaut, roll into an accuracy stacker later. Yeah, that's fair. What was there about accuracy I was trying to remember? Oh yeah, well, you'll like the next one. Call to Arms. Instead of, uh... Basically just triggers War Cries when they're off cooldown. Uh, all War Cries share cooldowns, so you're only going to be able to work with one. But this will just automate your War Cries, so you don't need to fucking worry about it anymore. They're just, they activate instantly, that you don't need to have them on your left click, you don't need to worry about them. It is so, so nice. You want to be able to automatically keep up your endurance charges? Well, I guess if you're a jug, then you won't need that. But, like, there's, there's a lot of, lot of nice 
A lot of nice things. Why am I blanking on what the fucking war cries are in this game? I've played this game for so fucking long. Ugh. <laughs> oh. But yeah, if you want to just trigger your war cries automatically, that's a thing we can do now. You want to trigger your guard skills automatically, you can do that too. We don't need to worry about any of that shit anymore, it's so nice. Also, if you like the comment, remember to follow the Twitch channel. We are 10 subscribers away, or 10 followers away from being able to actually have subscribers. Very big deal. It would help me a lot. Thank you. Okay. They have added transfigured versions for Artillery Ballista, Elemental Hit, Ice Shot, Incinerate, Kinetic Blast, Poisonous Concoction, Summon Holy Relic, and Tornado. This... this has me interested. Definitely. Had a while started during ambush, just curious what other people are doing. Uh, for this league, what I did was a, uh... I did a totem... I did an Inquisitor, um... Not Inquisitor. A Hierophant uh, Hex Blast Inquisitor. Why do I keep saying Inquisitor? Hierophant, Hex Blast, Totem build. <laughs> I did that, and I did a Witch, a Necromancer who was Ray Spiders as well. And those were like my two builds this league. Not sure what I'm going for next league, I'm still thinking about it. And we're going through the patch notes right now to actually look at some of the things that we can work with. I'm very excited for a lot of the changes, so I want to, like, really dive into it and see. Okay, we're going to skip some of some of these things. Uh, but, or go through them quickly. Veiled Chaos Orbs have been renamed to Veiled Orbs, so now you can remove a modifier and add a Veiled modifier. It's not a big deal like it used to be. Uh, a bunch of things have been changed. Their stack size has been upped. Exalted Orbs, Regal Orbs, Divine Orbs, Stack Decks... Uh, Enkindlings, Instillings, etc. Uh, there's some new uh, unique strong boxes are now on the minimap. Big, big deal. Pantheon powers are now across all characters. Big deal, because it's fucking annoying. You can right click on seal on uh, build divine vessels and it will upgrade your character without having to go to sin. So nice. Also, they've apparently hidden a bunch of surprises and improvements throughout the campaign. That's kind of cool. I want to I want to look that up and see what like that actually ends up being. There is now a sound when someone hits trade on you. So if you are alt tabbed away, you will get a sound when someone trades with you. That is a big deal for me. <laughs> OK, I'm going to skip the end game improvements for now. I'm going to skip most of this because I want to go down to the skill gem changes. Monster life increases in tier 17 maps no longer apply to the life of corpses in those maps. Wamp, wamp, wow. Detonate build, detonate dead and volatile dead builds just got nerfed. <laughs> Absolution of Inspire increased... Increases and reductions to minion damage now apply to the scale at 250% of their value instead of 200. Apparently, Absolution is still underpowered. Animates Gu Guardian of Smiting. Guardian now deals 30% more damage with its smiting ability. That does not surprise me, considering that Animate Guardian doesn't have very good damage anyways, and I would like to do an Animate Guardian build, but that has never really been a thing that I've been able to do. Animate Weapon of Self-Reflection now has one more Animate Weapon maximum. And Archmage. Now, Archmage is interesting, because I noticed that there's a very big difference in Archmage now. So, it cannot support Brand or Orb skills now, so that just kills all Ball Lightning Archmages and Stormbrand Archmages. Goodbye. Bye! <laughs> uh, it no longer has... Added, uh, skills gain added lightning damage equal to 75% of the mana cost and it no longer has support skills have base mana cost equal to 5% of unreserved max mana. 
it now has supported scales gain added lightning damage equal to 10% of unreserved mana. Not the mana cost, just your unreserved mana pool. Scaling up to 19%. And supported scales have added mana cost equal to 5% of unreserved mana. So what this means is that this does no longer scales off Archmage no longer scales off the cost of your scales. It now scales off the unreserved maximum mana that you have. So this is just about stacking mana now and not about stacking a ridiculous mana cost. So you can reduce your mana cost as much as you want now. That that won't that won't hurt you. Unless it's like sets it to be exactly that mana cost and it doesn't let you reduce it. But in general, like you can actually reduce the your mana cost now in Archmage builds and it won't harm your build. That's cool, you can just stack mana. It's very simple now. Well, Lightning of Static can no longer be used with totems. Hmm, I wonder who was abusing that. Blade Blast of Dagger Detonation. Apparently wasn't strong enough in the top end. Blade Flurry of Incision has 10% more critical strike chance. Blade Trap of Great Swords, which is really cool, has 120% effectiveness of added damage per its at level 1, previously 100%, scaling up to 180, previously 140. So, Blade Trap of Great Swords has been buffed significantly. Honestly, Blade Trap of Great Swords it kind of looks really awesome, and like I've seen some cool builds for it, so I kind of want that. <laughs> oh, Blade Vortex of the Scythe now has 40% more uh, effectiveness of added damage, and 20%... Wow. Blade Vortex of, of the Scythe now deals approximately 25% more damage at all gem levels. That's nice. Blink Arrow of Prismatic Clones. Clones now do 25% more damage to elemental arrows. I mean, that's fair. Like, Blink Arrow isn't exactly an offensive skill usually, so it's cool that they're working on that. Actually, that, that leads me to an interesting question. Can you can you put the blink arrow prismatic clones? Oh, there's only three. I was gonna say, can you just like make the blink arrow prismatic clones uh in a mine and then just like fire Blink arrow mines? <laughs> Unfortunately, there's only three clones, so, like, that kind of wouldn't work very well, but it was a funny thought. You still can do it, it's just not useful. Okay, Cleave of Rage. Now it's been nerfed. Cost more rage. Convocation. Buffed. Very excited about this. More regeneration, and... It just has one gem level now. Very simple. It didn't really need to level. It wasn't really a big deal. Divine Ire of Holy Lightning. Burst now does 120% more damage per hit, with hits per stage after the first, previously 100%, and does 80% more damage with ailments per stage, previously 60%. Now has 20% less area effect instead of 30% less. So, Divine Ire of Holy... Of Holy Lightning, deals more damage, hits a bigger area. Dumbing Blow of Inspiring. It now deals more more damage based on your minion damage. Essence Strain of Desperation. Now deals 50% more damage over time at all gem levels. Now has Lose Life and Energy Shield equal to 0.3% of debuff damage rather than 0.2. Explosive Concoction of Destruction now has plus 10% to Critical Strike Chance instead of 8. Let's see. Explosive Trap of Shrapnel has been nerfed. Uh, its flat damage has been nerfed like throughout its stages, but its added damage has been increased. 
So whether that is an increase or a decrease, ultimately, who knows. Also, the radius starts smaller and ends bigger now. Sanguinave Transmission now costs 16 life at gem level 1, previously 14. Scaling up to 46, previously 40. So, Sanguinave has gotten a bit of a nerf. It casts slower. It has slightly more damage effectiveness. Slightly more damage. Basically, it hits harder now, but it chains less and costs more. Armorstorm of Pelting now has two extra Firestorms maximum. That's nice. Flames are, uh, Firestorm of Pelting, by the way, is... Um, so there's Firestorm of Pelting and Firestorm of Meteors. Uh, Firestorm of Pelting is the old Firestorm, where it's just, like, all the little tiny hits. And Firestorm of Meteors is just that one big meteor that's at the start. So basically, just split it up into two different things. Flames are comb combusting... Burning Ground now deals 35% of fire damage per second of inflicted Ignite. Ooh, good for Ignite builds. Flicker Strider Power has now more critical strike chance per, per tower charge. Frostblades of Catabasis now has more da cold damage over time. Frostblink. Frostblink has 250%. Damage effectiveness of added damage over 180%, which was the previous. Interesting. Okay, so Frostblink of Wintry Blast was the one that people were using, is what I'm getting from this for the totem builds. This spell's cast time is added to its cooldown if triggered. Yep. <laughs> Just slightly more damage to make up for that, or slightly more effective. Ad uh, yeah. Added effectiveness of damage. Uh, it scales up higher in the top end and starts a little bit lower in the bottom end. General's Cry now has a three second cooldown instead of four. Galvanic Field of Intensity now hits faster. Ice Crash of Cadence has 80% more damage instead of 50% more damage. And make Blast of Fragmentation. Now has increases and reductions to spell damage, also apply to attack damage. Um, at 0 to 50% of their value. With reduced effectiveness of damage added at all levels. So apparently kinetic bolt of fragmentation was a big problem. Lancing Steel of Spraying now has less projectiles than before. So that's been nerfed. Lightning Arrow of Electrocution uh, hits more targets. Lightning Spire Top Overloading now strikes 8 areas instead of 6. Prismatic Clones now deal 25% more damage, just in general. Penance Brand of Dissipation. Yeah, a Penance Brand of Dissipation got nerfed. Yep, because everyone was using it because it was ridiculous. It now has 30% more damage with hits and ailments per energy, instead of 60%. Yeah, the flat damage has been re in reduced, the uh, damage effect added damage effectiveness has been reduced, and now activates slower. Basically, they brought it down to the level of a normal scale. Whatever, that's fine. Everyone is running it. Anyways, that was all that anyone was using, so I'm quite happy that it's, that it's been reduced. That's fine. Power Siphon of Archmage has been changed to reflect the new Archmage changes. So now deals added uh, lightning damage equal to 15% of maximum mana, uh, scaling up to 24%, which is... Uh, starts 5% higher, and it ends 8% higher. So Power Siphon of the Archmage is now stronger. And honestly, that kind of makes me want to play with it. I had an idea of using Power Siphon of the Archmage, then, which gives you lots of uh, power charges, with Cast on Crit, then Arc, and then Archmage, to like double dip with the Archmage uh, max mana, and then go higher font. 
My only problem is that then I'd be going Hierophant for, like, the fourth league in a row, and honestly, I'm getting sick of playing Hierophant. <laughs> I want to play something different. Uh. So, don't know if I'll do that, but it's a fun idea. I, I do kind of want to play Archmage. I will, I will be completely honest, I do want to play Archmage. Like, it does sound fun, but... No, I don't want to play more Templar. I only play Templar. It's so boring. Okay, Rain of Arrows or artil Artillery. Now has more damage effectiveness in the lower levels and less in the upper levels, so it's been a bit nerfed. Uh, Ray Spectre Transients now has more Spectres at all levels. That's good. Ray Zombie of Falling... The corpses, the zombies are no longer usable by detonate dead. Ah, I can see how that was exploited. <laughs> Scourge Arrow of the Menace has been slightly nerfed. One less Thorn Arrow. Shield Crush of the Chieftain has had its like entire animation reworked. And it also has added fire damage 8 to 12 for 15 armor rather than 7 to 9. So that's actually a pretty big deal. And it has... 10%... Or it has up to 40% more area of effect. Which is means it'll be a lot bigger. So, actually, I mean, like, I've wanted to play Shield Crush for a while. That is a big... That is a big possibility. The problem is I haven't been able to get my melee builds to scale up the way that I have my spell builds. I know how to scale spell builds. I don't know how to scale melee builds. So I'm sitting there like around like 3 million DPS. I'm like, but I just played a Templar. I could go over 10 million easily. It costs like a lot of in-game cash, but like, do it. So we'll, we'll see if that works. I'll probably play with it and see. Sniper's Mark got a little bit nerfed. Uh, it you'd get a little bit less damage uh, at the at the upper end. That's fine. It already was very powerful to begin with. Uh, your your projectiles, which split, which I feel like most people didn't even use, uh, is are just two at all levels, two splits, or addition or splits towards two different targets rather than two to four depending on the level so that's like a small aoe decrease because like you're already, you're already picking it for damage like that's another really hefty bonus to add spark of unpredictability has been added has had a lot of damage added to it just in general spectral throw materialization has a bunch of effective damage added to it Stormbrand of Indecision has had its da at affected, added effective damage reduced, its cast time increased, and its upper end damage it also increased. So it was partially nerfed, partially buffed. But in the end, it was nerfed. Uh, Raging Spirit's melee attack no longer gains up to 38% more damage as it levels. So Raging Spirits have been nerfed hard, which is fine. I mean, that's people were already were using it a lot. Golem's Chaos Aura now does 30% more damage over time. Cool. That sounds great. I would love a reason to, to use Chaos Golems. Flame Golem with a Meteor. Golem's Meteor skills now deal 50% more damage, and the Burning Ground now deals 30% more damage over time. Cool. I love that. Uh, that's just the flame golems making like firestorm meteors, right? Summons a flame golem. When summon the flame golem attacks by falling from the sky, dealing fire damage in the area and leaving burning ground around the impact. After landing, it casts a fire wave and a wave of fire. What? 
It casts a fire spray and a wave of fire damage. Maximum one golem, which is the normal amount. So it makes... It makes a minion skill more into a uh like a direct attack or a direct spell damage thing which is kind of nice in some ways because what you can do is you can add elemental army to reduce the uh um the elemental resistance of things around it infernal legion so it do deals damage to things that are nearby and a uh, minion instability, so that uh, when it gets low on health, it explodes. You have enough golems, you could potentially summon a whole bunch of them, and then use... use Primordial Might for its increased damage if you summon a golem in the past 8 seconds, and then they deal more damage if they've been summoned in the last 8 seconds. And they're also aggressive. You could stack Primordial Mites, so that would work. with an Anima Stone. You could also use the, uh... You could use the Primordial... What's the Amulet one called? Primordial Amulet. Primordial Amulet. Primordial Amulet. I'll just search Primordial. Can I just search Primordial as a thing? Primordial Shane, there we are. Okay. Plus three to maximum number of summoned golems. Golems do less damage, golems have less life. So, what I'm wondering about this is if you want to use the Flame Golem of the Meteor for its, specifically for its Meteor skill, and not for anything else, I wonder if you could use this as, like, a quick casting thing, and, like, cast it as if it was Firestorm. That does sound kind of interesting. And it's going to have a lot more damage now, so... Here, I want to try this. I'm going to go to standard, just because that's the easiest bot to do it. Go back to my Pyroclast mine character. Because this should probably be a decent way to try it. I'm going to just try making Flame Golem of the Meteor Mines. With a oh wait, this is my Firestorm character, not the Pyroclast Mine character. That one I don't want to mess with because that one's actually very strong. How hard is this to get in standard? Maybe it's better for me to do this not in standard. No, that's fine. I should have a primordial chain kicking around. I'd be surprised if I didn't. For all this time. Got enough golem builds. Uh, okay. I don't really need the money back, but sure. Thank you. Nice person. Let's see. What do we have for six links that would actually work? I might just use...
I might just use a tabula just to make things simpler. Oh, well, that's much easier because that has a bunch of weight sockets. Arts mines, minefield, tap and mine damage, combustion. Wait, this can't. Hold on a second. Can this not be made into a mine? Oh wait, I need to actually I need to actually add high <laughs> high impact support to it. Otherwise, it's not going to work. First, mine's twenty twenty. Yeah, I can add twenty one twenty. Mine. Last chain. I prefer high impact, but whatever. Actually, do I have a high? Yeah, I have a high impact right there. Okay, I'll swap out. Ours mine support, I guess, then? Yeah. <laughs> it takes so much mana! <laughs> it takes so much mana! Yeah, I'm also a primary mill chain. Be really stupid if I didn't. Okay, I have one. Oh shit! No, I don't. Damn it! What do I not have enough decks for? Is it just the helmet? It's it's a fucking helmet itself. That's why. That's the steel skin. Uh, how much more decks do I need? Not a huge amount. What should I take out? I'll take off some damage. Yes, yes, I'm going to get another reset soon anyways. Why why is summon skitter bots not activating? I think W. What what am I missing? I can't activate it anymore. What? Why? What? <laughs> They're minions! Right, they're minions and I can't use... <laughs> God damn it. Okay, well, whatever. Wait, why can I only spawn one? I can't throw more than one mine at a time. Oh, it's because of the cooldown? <laughs> I mean, this is fun. Don't get me wrong, it's fun, but like... Holy shit, is it a lot of mana. Also... I don't know if it's good. I don't know if this is good at all. Here, let's... Let's go to the ceremonial place, the reliquary. Ceremonial testing ground of all builds. Or at least for me.
Okay, this... <laughs> the cooldown recovery is rough. Wait, doesn't Primordial Eminence do cooldown recovery? Emmy... Emmy... Need you. Boop, 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 oh, fuck. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> so many jewels that don't exist anymore. Wait, I can search Primordial. <laughs> I'm being silly. Har oh. Harmony. Boost real cool and recovery, right? How do I just randomly get... How do I just randomly get my the trinket slot? It's like... Did you know Heist exists? Yes, yes, I know Heist exists. You don't need to remind me constantly. Oh. Why not have... I can't just have one Primordial Harmony. You must have more than that. Come on. Let's... No, they're on the Legacy tab. What? Come on. Okay, well, what, let's see what one primordial, primordial uh, harmony does. Here, I can't do cradle strikes with these anyways. Wait, no, I need... Socket? Socket? Okay. Harmony. Okay, so I now have Primordial Harmony and Primordial Might. Well, that doesn't feel as awful as it used to. <laughs> I wonder how low you could get the cooldown if you... Had a bunch of them. I'm at 1.05 cooldown per s or cooldown. Yes, not per second. 1.18. What's reducing my cooldown? Not that. Planes reducing my cooldown. Is it one of my weird... Is it one of my weird, like... Legacy items, maybe? Just like... Shouldn't it be longer than that? It's supposed to be a two-second cooldown. Oh, 40% increased cooldown recovery rate on, uh... From the quality. Okay. I mean, if I add two more Primordial Harmonies, I could potentially make it faster. This is an awful build idea. <laughs> Funny, though. It is funny. I will get, we'll give it that it's funny. Okay, let's... Let's go back to... Not, not doing this. <laughs> I'll put this over here. Why not? Those together. Yes, I want to. Yes, I want to fuck around with that again.
Okay. N! Welcome to the stream again. Yep, back to the golden game. I've been trying to- I was just trying to make, like, see if I can make a build out of the summon flame golem of the meteor. Like, self-casting it like it was Firestorm. <laughs> Does, wasn't- wasn't really working. <laughs> just cause, like, the meteor skill's gonna do 50% more damage. It's like, maybe? Maybe? Maybe. I don't know. Ice Golem of Shattering. Golem's on death projectile Nova now has two extra projectiles and deals 25% more damage. Skeleton archers now deal 15% more damage from summon skeleton archers. Excuse me? What do you mean dedicated portal button? What do you mean dedicated portal button? I'm gonna be very unhappy with you if you're trolling me. Hmm. Hmm. Where is this information? Here's that list of all the quality of life things that they were adding. Propolis teasers? Is it this? Yes. Well, I'll be! Well, I'll be... Monkey's aunt. Helps if I turn the volume on. Well, shit! I like that. I wonder if you can assign, like... It'd be nice if you could assign, like, your portal gem to it as well. Well, shit. Also, I like the fact that frogs. In other words, frogs. Which is very topical, considering that someone just bought me $40 or $42 worth of frogs earlier today. <laughs> 
Well, uh, technically fifty dollars for the frogs. So we have a frog there and there and there. Where are the rest of the frogs? Oh, oh, they all ended up down here. That's why. I have so many frogs now. Oh, th there's four of them down here. That's why. You know, some someone bought Rotten King Thirty Four bought me fifty dollars worth of frogs today. I now have every frog and toad in the game. Yeah, I'll show you the uh, the the toads as well. They're on my uh, affliction characters. I know, it was super nice. Yeah, I have the, uh... I have the, uh, Hypno Frog and... I don't actually remember their names. I have the Hypno Toad and... or Huntsman Hypno Toad and the Madcap Hypno Toad. Now. Nightbot, you need to stop it. Nightbot stopping a twit. Why can't I reverse Nightbot's decisions? It has a good reason for what it's doing. I just don't... I just... It just doesn't work in my channel right now. I've did some settings, for auto mod at least, but I, I need to figure out how to modify uh what was it? The sex lizard? Oh yeah! It uh, blocked it blocked um it blocks someone from from saying you are a shark because apparently it's bullying to call me a shark even though they weren't actually calling me a shark they were talking about saying different was that you swift oh yeah also stupid sexy lizard got banned <laughs> Which is dumb, because there was a stupid sexy lizard! Yeah, sharks and lizards, really, real prime bullying material. Yeah, I mean, how did you know I'm a shark tuber? Oh no, don't take frogs into tier 17 frog maps. Yeah, that might be. Bad. The ocean is not soup. We're not having this conversation again. Okay, let's actually look at the, 
Let's go back to look at the patch notes so I can bond over how cool they are. Did I not? Did was that entire time I was showing off frogs? I had not changed my scene over to, to Path of Exile. Oops. But there is so many frogs. Oh well. Take my word for it, there's frogs. Okay, immediately I'm wondering. Wait. Yeah, wait, no. Damn it. I was gonna say, I wonder if Iron Mass works with the Skeleton Archers, but they need to wield the Iron Mass, and they're not archers if they're wielding a sword. That's not gonna work. Mm. Tornado shot has been nerfed. Less attack speed, more mana cost. Unearth spawns lower health corpses now. Void sphere of rending now pulses faster. Volatile dead. Uh, upon reaching the maximum number of orbs, the oldest orbs do not explode. They are simply killed. That's fair. That would be an extra bit of damage that probably was there. Mindless Aggression got changed on the uh, Witch's, uh, the Necromancer's Ascendancy Tree. So instead of 10% increased movement speed, attack speed, and cast speed, and 30% increased damage, it's now 10% more damage and 20% more maximum life, which I much prefer. Uh, bone Barrier, which I never took for Bone Armor, like, I, I just never used it. Um... Which, yeah, Bone Armor and Life Recovery per minion and Minion Maximum Life is all gone. Now minions have 40% of life as extra energy shield and 1% of damage dealt by your minions is leached to you as life. Which is an important thing to have uh, if you're a necromancer who's a life build. It occurs to me that maybe that's not useful. But still. Call to Arms has been renamed to Warlord's Call. Now provides Warlords no longer exert uh, attacks, and War Cries also, or War Cries no longer exert attacks, and War Cries also grant their buffs to nearby allies. That means you can give people endurance charges now, like, like manually. That's kind of cool. Uh, it removes the War Cries are instant thing, which makes me think that War Cries are now going to be instant just in general. They didn't add that to the uh, to the notes, but I th I think that's what it means. Either that or uh, the new uh, call to arms gem is just going to make them instant. Oh, it hasn't been added yet to the silver key. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Okay. So this is interesting. 50% of your energy shield is added to your stun threshold. Instead of stun threshold is based on 60% of your energy shield. I think that means that will be better for you. Also, new mind mastery that I am so happy about. Detonate mind. You can now set your minds to detonate while you are moving. Instead of the 5% increased area of effect for each mine. 
which I'll be honest, I've never used the air increase area effect one, but this I want more than anything. So that makes me really happy, honestly. I'm going to use that constantly because I what I used to do is I used to put uh, uh, detonate mines on my left click and that was always just something that would take out my left click and now we don't have to. That makes me really happy. Looks like Soul Ascension gloves no uh, have been changed. They used so they give you Soul Leader basically. Uh, they now you eat in Soul whenever you hit a very unique enemy, no more than once every half a second, uh, which is faster than before. Uh, your maximum souls is now 45 instead of 50, just because that's how Soul Leader works now. And uh, instead of losing a soul. Every three seconds, you lose a soul. You start losing souls every half a second after four seconds of there being of not gaining them. Plus, it also has negative ten to plus ten maximum number of eaten souls. So that's kind of cool. Soul leader was stupid before anyway, so I'm really happy that they changed that in general. Well, guys, just impatience. You no longer has thirty percent increased movement speed. I don't know how I feel about that. I generally think movement speed should be higher in this game anyways, so... Yeah. Iron Mass has been changed, so it now uh, provides the Unholy Might buff instead of, uh... Wait. Nope. I'm reading this wrong. So Unholy Might has been changed now. So it works a bit differently. Iron Mask no longer has 25% chance to inflict Wither on hits with this weapon, because Unholy Might itself, which is what it gives now, uh, has that base. So it is now easier to... It's now much easier to do that. Also, uh, you've increased physical damage on it, which is converted to, to uh, chaos damage. Also good. Oh, Scrolls of Wisdom can now be used on items that are corrupted? Wow, that's weird. Cool, though. Okay, Flask cannot be corrupted. We know about that. Uh, level 1 Convocation can be added to minion wands and shields. I'm really happy with that. Uh... The mech alarm belt, which created, created the alarm bot, has been replaced by mechanical belt, which gives you a just normal gem socket, which is cool, as it wasn't po it wasn't possible to socket a gem into your belt before, to the best of my knowledge. You could socket abyssal jewels, but not gems. Uh, reduced mana cost can no longer be unveiled to craft on flasks. Stretching is good. I highly recommend it. Ruby, Sapphire, and Topaz Flask have been changed so that they now give maximum resistance instead of less damage taken by their element. Uh, two additional rogue exiles spawning in your map can no longer roll! Yes! <laughs> I hate rogue exiles. I heavily advocate for them removing them from the game. They will not, because people have paid to get to those slots or been rewarded those slots. But as far as I'm concerned, Rogue Exiles actively detract from the game's quality. So I'm happy that they no longer roll in maps. And if people want to play with Rogue Exiles, they can play with Rogue Exiles and torture themselves all they want. Also, Beyond Beasts no longer appear. Unless, like, via a, a uh, affix on your map. That's fine, you can allocate it. Corruption implicits for maps that unidentified the item have replaced the corruption implicit that adds an implicit. Oh, okay, because basically maps will no longer become unidentified because you corrupted them. That's nice. That was always annoying. Uh, Jill sockets that reduce mana cost, no longer a thing. Um... 
the additional element resistances on flasks have been uh, modified, so now there is uh, way less resistances you can get on flasks, and there is less tiers of them. Then a bunch of tattoos have been added back to the game. They're now available through Ritual. I'm not going to go through all these changes, because none of them are build, uh, build enabling, in my opinion. Donation cards, ruthless specific things, which I'll never play. Monster balance. So, corpse explosions have now become more obvious, which is important, because detonate dead will just fucking destroy you. That is really good. Uh... Rare monster item bonus mechanics are now rare, so uh, the following mechanics have been removed. Items dropped are converted to gems, items dropped are converted to scarabs, items dropped have all white sockets. Damn it, we had so many cool white socket things. Items dropped are duplicated. Rare slain rare items slain rare monsters gives increased XP, and slain rare monsters gives increased gem experience. I did not realize those were even mechanics that existed in the game. Also, if that's, like, the Of Calandra thing, where it dropped a ton of duplicate items, I'm happy that's been removed, because as far as I'm concerned, that was just useless. Cycling damage reduction has been reworked to adaptive resistances. It now works like, um, Elemental Equilibrium, where they become resistant to the highest damage type taken of, uh, Elemental or Chaos damage. Tormented spirits now have more life, because they weren't annoying before. Actually, no, they were too easily killed before, come to think of it. And killing them doesn't really give much of a benefit, but them actually touching things in a map does give more benefit. So you know what, actually, that is a good change, never mind. Alicia, Herald of the Scourge, their lightning wave skill has been added new visual effects. Hopefully it'll be easier to, um, to telegraph that. Plus the chest level no longer rolls. Moving things. All of this stuff is amazing. Add notification when you unlock a new map crafting device. Added the ability to control shift left click an entire all of the stackable items of a particular type into a trade window or vice out of a trade window or whatever. So big fucking deal. Hold control left click to continuously apply jeweler's orbs or currents or fusings or or, or quality currency and so on. Uh, order crafting station. Your item is now. Uh, your item stats are now displayed when you hover over the crafting button, which we've needed since harvest! Very happy it's there. Pressing alt on a map now shows the monster level. Good. Uh, scarab section got changed. Yeah, it would have to be because there's like 20 new scarabs. And they all got changed anyways. I went through the bug fixes earlier, just on my own. I don't think there's actually... I don't think there's actually, like, anything in here that I want to go over particularly. None of it, like, really matters a huge amount. Tic Tacs are good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that is basically all the changes. Took a while to go through that, and we skipped a lot too, so that's pretty surprising. Also, we now have tier 17 maps that uh, have taken over the place of where uber bosses come from. Uber bosses and normal versions of them have been split with their loot now, so you don't have to worry about... Uh, there will be a reason now to do both of them. No more invitations. Invitations are just a thing of the past, which is great. Uh, now just Kirak gives you them when you when you get earn them. So nice. Um, 
Mana Storm has the Mana Storm Shield has been buffed. The Wraith Lord Unique Helmet is has received like a huge, huge like overhaul. And now it's four abyssal sockets instead of any normal sockets. And you can have a maximum and uh, you can have plus one to maximum number of specters per socketed uh, ghastly eye jewel. And plus one to two level of minion gem scales. Uh, this also makes it so that you can no longer have non-Spectre minions if you have, like, the Wraithler helmet equipped, I believe. So you can have up to plus four Spectres just from your helmet, which is nice. So you can have, like, an army of Spectres, which sounds cool. I mean, the spe the summon summon specter of transients where like it gives you extra specters and you can ju you can only summon things like in one area yeah, it does sound kind of interesting to me though it's useless for bossing so it kind of feels bad i'm happy that they've changed a lot of things to like make them a bit easier to manage like Removing sections and master missions and rolling it all into scarabs, like, I'm fine with that. That's fine with me. That just simplifies things, like... There was... There was something, uh, in one of the videos, it was like... Oh, we're, here it is. It's easy to forget critical steps and it's tiring repeating them. Like, where you have to remember to... Click your master mission and click your crafting device and click your influence and set up your sextants, and all of that shit. And they removed two of those steps. So, I'm happy with that. Also, the fact that you can have masters together is nice. Also, Scarab stack sizes it down 20. And, and, we'll see if I get to fuck around with this too much. Um, now, when you trade, so it was before, when you trade three Scarabs, and you get a Scarab of a higher level, uh, that different levels of scarabs do not exist anymore. So now it's when you trade three scarabs in of a single type, they become a random scarab, which is great because now then all those just like useless scarabs can become something. Maybe I'll be able to try Ubers now that I don't need 10 million DPS. Uh, I don't think Ubers got easier. Like, I think you still need 10 million DPS. I don't I don't think anything's been changed in that sense. Just where they are is different. Yeah, no, they've just they just come from a different area now. Yeah, no, Ubers are I mean Uber bosses are meant to be like this stupid, like nearly unobtainable thing. Most people, I don't know if you know this, but only 1.7% of the lifetime player base, like, let's say 1.5% of the lifetime player base of Path of Exile has beaten the Maven. The normal Maven. And the normal Maven is weaker than every Uber boss, even Uber, Uber Elder. So... Like, the Uber content isn't really a thing for most people anyways. And honestly, it's not that big a deal to do it. Like, like, okay, not saying that it's easy, I just mean, like, there are other fun parts of the game to play with. Like, th there are other things you can do. Like, genuinely, like, just, I'd, tr I'd try some of the other stuff. Because the Uber content is just meant to be, like, super, super punishing for people who've made builds that are ridiculous. And, like, I have made builds that are ridiculous before, and I have killed Uber Shaper. And that was super, super nice, but it was just such a pain in the ass. Oh, the memory game pisses me off so much. I hate that so much. Because, like, I have no memory. I cannot fucking remember a series of blips at all. Like... I just, I'm pretty sure I just tanked it each time when I beat the Maven on, on stream. Oh, yeah, I... 
Yeah, it's 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 a thing. It's a thing. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the uber bosses are like so far above Maven for challenge. Mean. Should be one of my highest viewed videos. Where is my little uber accident? Here it is. Let me just, just show you like me playing Uber Shaper. Uh like let me let me show you how ridiculous Uber Shaper is. Because if you have a problem with things being on your screen with the Maven? No. 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 This is going to be so much worse. Like, look at that. Do you... Because he's invulnerable, you doof. Oh yeah, his his bullet hell, you don't get a shield uh, in the uber fight. You just have to avoid all of the hits. Yeah, it's pretty hard to deal with the Maven boosting an already stupidly powerful creature. That's why I don't do Maven Witness stuff for the Shaper, and, like, I, I've never done the Feared, because it's just not worth it to me. But, like, look at the bullet hell here. You have to avoid all of this manually. I'll move forward a little bit. Yeah. So... Yeah. It is... I, I, like, I did enjoy being able to, uh, learn how to do it and, like, beat it over time, but it, it is, it is super extra. It is, like, a super extra kind of thing. <laughs> so, like, you don't have, you really don't need to do what... <laughs> Really don't. It's it's a thing. But yeah, I mean it's it's interesting if you've already gotten to the point where the shaper feels boring to you. But if you haven't gotten to that point, then eh. I've enjoyed my time with it, but yeah. 
I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about two two. The quest pinnacle bosses have less HP than normal versions. Yes. They are tutorial versions. So if you fight a uh, a Searing Exarch through like the free one through the Maven, it has less HP. If you fight the uh the Eater of Worlds, it has less HP. It is weaker. But do you still get the same drops to the best of my knowledge? So Yay. See, there is one thing in this game that really annoys me, and it's that you can't practice these fights. Like, I would like the ability to go fight the Shaper or, like, any of the Uber bosses for free with no reward for doing so. Not even XP. You give me nothing for doing it, and cost me nothing to do it. I just want to throw myself at the boss as many times as it takes to learn the mechanics. I don't want to just keep... I, I don't want to spend two div per attempt just to learn the mechanics. Like, you die six times not knowing what's wrong. Like, it's, it sucks. That is, that is definitely a problem I have with the game, is like, you can't practice these fights. You practice these fights by doing these fights. Yeah. Yeah. I actually got a uh a foil replica cortex uh from a uh reliquary key the other day. I think that just went up on the channel. Yeah, that that should be one of the shorts up on the channel right now. But yeah, cortex is fucking expensive. The way that I get around, uh, yeah, it was four and a half div, so I was pretty happy. Uh, the way that I get around the, uh, Vortex thing being expensive is I take this node right here, Vivid Memories, plus 1.5% chance for a synthesis map to drop from the final boss of each map in tier plus, uh, 11 plus, so in any red map. That is actually very easy to do, and it happens way more than you think. And it can be any of the maps. They're all they're minimum 30c a piece, maximum four and a half div. Like vivid memories is absolutely worth it, a hundred percent. Yeah. If you can find maps that are like Mesa, like like red red mesas, for example. Those are, like, so fast to run, red atolls, like, just run as many as you can to just beat up the boss, see if you get a synthesis. Because uh, what I like to do is I take Vivid Memories, I take, uh, where is it? Remnants of the Past, so, in but increased chance to drop an Elder Guardian or Shaper Guardian map. I take Conquer the, uh, Conquer the Conquerors, chan increased chance to drop a Conqueror map, and there was one thing else, I think. I don't remember. No. I think those are actually it. So, chance to drop a Synthesis map, chance to drop an Elder map, chance to drop a Shaper map, a chance to drop a Conqueror map. Like, yeah, it is, it, it's so nice. Oh, what's your question?
notice a lot of people like to travel on the very elder ring of the tree. Is that just because they know what they want, or is it not worth to stay in the inner ring too much for passive point's sake? Uh... Hmm. I think... I think it's just that the space between points is larger on the outer outer layers. Like, yeah. Just, just in general. Like, let's say I want to get to, uh, that's a good thing. Uh, let's say I want to get to Seance here. Uh, if I go through from here, for example, be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to get to the cluster, versus like going around the outside. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, that's actually more, but I like ultimately the thing that you need to uh, remember is just like. Find a Atlas Passive Tree website where you can demo it and just see what the shortest path is. It just, it's just that. It's just, just whatever happens to be the shortest path to get you to the places you want. It is just go wherever is useful. Generally, running around in the middle tends to waste a lot of points, I find, but it, I don't know. Like, there are areas around the edges where, like, around here, for example, where I find that it wastes a lot of points going that way. So, like, if I want to go up here, I would go up and around there rather than going this way. So some, po some places tend to waste a lot of points. And if you, let's say, want to do Breach, uh, Breach tends to be around uh, the edges, generally. And around up here. Yep, and here. Or, and over there. So, like, a lot of those are around the edges. Uh, a lot of the harvest stuff are around the edges. A lot of the abyss stuff is around the edges. The stuff near the center, like, we have essences and harbingers and tormented spirits and, uh, uh, rogue exiles and stuff. I don't know, like, that stuff, I don't even touch that stuff. Or, like, blighted maps, like, eh. Yeah, the, uh, I mean, this is one of the largest passive trees out there for as far as, like, games go. It's, it's a big thing. <laughs> it is a big, big passive tree. Uh, learning how to make, like, I, I make my own builds. I don't play any meta builds. I've, I don't think I've ever played a meta build before. Like, let me phrase it. I don't think I've ever picked someone else's build that they have made and then used it like wholesale or even like most of the way like i always make my own builds and the way that i got good at that is by failing over and over and over and over to the point that i have memorized the passive tree and can probably draw it for you with that like without any reference i actually kind of want to do that as a challenge one day like draw the passive tree from memory because, like, I have looked at it so many times. And to give you a really quick example, something. Do, 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 do. Opening path of building. Opening path of building. Opening path of building. Yes, it was. It was both. Okay, so you want to know how you learn the passive tree? Look at this. That is how I learned the passive tree. I made every single one of these builds. And I have still deleted, like, at least a fifth of the builds I've made. So, <laughs> unfortunately, it is just sheer memorization. <laughs> just 
throwing yourself at builds after build after build after build. Also, the Krangled League was really fun in my opinion. I... I made something really strange and cool. I made a, uh, um, I believe it was an Arc Mine Raider with, who scaled on endurance charges. It was really fun. Yeah, that is one problem with Path of Building, is that you need to know what the skill feels like as well. So, you can't just look at the numbers, because there's definitely times I've looked at the numbers and been like, oh, this is 3 million DPS, that's really nice. That's a good start. Go try it in-game. Skill doesn't work that way. It doesn't. It just does not work the way you think it did. It doesn't feel right, it doesn't look right, it, it needs this one thing or another thing to feel right. And, well, you gotta swap out power for that. Yeah, I mean, Path of Building is meant to, like, record the changes that you want to make. Um, like, to record the changes you want to make and do the math for you. That's, that's really what it's for. Like, you still need to test things in-game to, like, know what they feel like. Otherwise, you'll just have no idea. Because some builds don't feel good to play. They mathematically do a lot of damage. But they don't feel good to play. And my Flame Surge build, back, back in the league that it was in, I did a build guide for it, Honestly, like, it did decent damage, it was a decent league starter, but I didn't enjoy playing it. I didn't. It's, the, the skill has changed since then, but back then, I didn't enjoy the way I did it. And that was a case of, the math is there, the fun is not. Thanks for coming, Swift. Good night. Oh my gosh, chain hook. Fucking chain hook. <laughs> chain hook is the perfect example of sounds really cool. Doesn't really work the way you want it to. It just doesn't. Like, for me, that's consecrated path. I've just never been able to get consecrated path to be anything. It's always so bad. And I don't know how many how many consecrated path builds I've deleted. <laughs> Uh. Oh, right, for Krangled, I did a uh, Arcmine Deadeye, who scaled endurance charges, right. That was really fun and stupid. I enjoyed that a lot. I, I did a build guide on the, uh, on the, uh, Krangled Deadeye. I'd honestly, like, I'd highly suggest you go check it out. Uh, not just because I want views, though I do want views, uh, but because, like, it was a really interesting thing trying to play with the, uh, Krangled stuff, and it was, it was kind of cool to see. I don't know if a skill is good or not, or needs a lot of gear to get working. Test it! <laughs> the, that's really only the way, like, that's the best way to do it, in my opinion. Um... I have definitely found scenarios where I have tried to make a uh, path of building, and it just has not gotten there. That's one of the reasons why I like to do path of buildings before I create the, the build-in game, is just because, like, you can find out if the upper end, w like, damage will work, usually through path of building. Uh, you're gonna want to try it in-game just to, like, get the basic concept down, like... I don't know, just, like, feel it out on an already leveled character. Um, usually in standard. And if that's okay, then you set a figure out the DPS in Path of Building. The other option that I know some people do is they go on poe.ninja, and they check and see how many people are using a skill. 
Because usually the more powerful a skill, the more people that use it. And just whether it needs lots of gear to get working is purely just experience, I find. Like, usually how powerful a skill is is whether it, it like, defines whether it needs a lot of uh, gear to get working. Because, like, if a skill's really powerful, it'll probably work very well on its own without a bunch of shit. But some... Actually, that's not totally true, because the uh, Ray Spiders are not that good without gear. But they are good with gear. I mean, they can. I think they can get up to like 18 million DPS at the top end against bosses with their poison. But that's certainly not something that you can just do. You need... You definitely need some gear to make that happen. I think when the leak starts, poison, uh, poison concoction and go later to deck, spac bleh, deck stacking uh, spectral throw. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, poison. There's poison concoction just got a new transfiguration. We don't know what it is yet, but I mean, it's a cool thing. Also, one of like. The big things that made that uh, made Ray Spiders work was Corpse Walkers. Like I wouldn't play without Corpse Walkers, and I wouldn't play without Gravebind. Like both of those are kind of required. Like I feel like you find out pretty quickly when you try to play with a skill if the skill's just not working. Like if I tried to play without those, like it would be a nightmare. So, I don't know. The answer is you just gotta try it, unfortunately. I don't really have a better explanation than that. Maybe a more experienced streamer would, but I do not. I have to say, I've, I've really, really benefited from the Squire being cheap this league. That being able to pay, like, I think I paid either, like one or two div for the Squire. Or something like it was really, really, really cheap, and that's one of the reasons why this build became as powerful as it is. Because instead of having four support gems, it is seven, and also these ones have increased quality. And like, I have awakened minion damage, awakened unbound ailments, awakened void manipulation, awakened deadly ailments, awakened melee physical damage support. <laughs> this this build took a lot of money. Here's the things that deal damage are the very straightforward stuff, I find. Like, deal good damage without things. Uh, I find this, the main thing that the Squire is good for is builds that require you to put something in your main hand that has a skill in, in the unique itself. So, like, if you're using Arcali's Fang... Or if you're using that scepter that gives you uh, scorching ray for level twenty five scorching ray, for example, or what's another example? Um... I mean, yeah, you getting a second six link is like especially for minion builds is really nice too. Um. Hmm. I mean, mainly when I think of the Squire, I think of Arcali's Fang. Like, it's it's when there's a skill on something. Uh, another, oh, another one where it's really, really good. Uh, have one? Do I not have one? Do not seem to have one. Okay, let me swap to standard. Uh, Replica Bitter Dream. Or Normal Bitter Dream, either or. I find Replica Bitter Dream to be more powerful.
There it is. Okay, Socketed Gems are supported by Elemental Penetration, Immolate, Unbound Ailments, Ice Bite, Inspiration, and Innervate. So, you can get essentially a 9-link on Better Dream, and if you have a Squire, you can get a 12-link. That is... I mean, that's another thing where you can use it. Like, something where, like, you specifically need to put whatever skill it is that's your main skill into your main hand is where the Squire shines. Another, get, here's the other good example, Balefire. Grants you a skill. Gotta use this or it, that just will not work. Uh, what's another good example? Um... Oh, another really, really good example, uh... Mjolnir. Because, like, when you're triggering socketed lightning skills, you can actually make them into a six link with uh, the Squire. Oh, it's... Having a, the, the 12 link isn't as great as you might think. You have to find a, like, gems that... Or you have to find a skill that benefits from as many gems as possible. And it's not as good... C consider how much some, like, the mana something costs so that you can cast just just a normal skill with a six link setup consider if it had double the number of mana increasing uh more than double the number of uh mana reservation efficiency or mana reservation multipliers or mana many cost multipliers basically like you can make a skill that's like oh you have you have a pseudo 12 link also, you it costs you nine hundred mana to cast it. <laughs> yeah. Plus, it's it's hard to make it work with a lot of things, but I have found that replica bitter dream is a good way to like pick up, um, just like a lot of power very easily early on in a league. I've I've enjoyed that one definitely. Archmage? I mean, Archmage. If you find something that's good for Archmage and, uh... Um... Oh, by the way, your message didn't send because Nightbot got upset you with you for capitals. But, uh... Archmage has been boosted. What, what am I selling? I don't know why I'm selling I don't want to, I don't care. Nah, it just doesn't like capitals. I mean, you could use Archmage stuff, it's true. I mean, I feel like you would do better scaling your mana than, than scaling all those gems, but... Plus, you also can't benefit from, like, plus to skill gem, or plus to spell skill gem, or plus to all fire gems, or plus to all elemental gems, or whatever, because they're all on something. So you can't ever, like, level them up or give them quality. So, like, they're, they're all, like, level 15, 15 zeros. So it's not the same as having a bunch of 2020s. But it still has the same mana cost <laughs> as having a bunch of 2020s. So, it bit, Replica Better Dream is really good for certain things. But not for everything. So, I would highly suggest trying it. Like, it's a really good way to start things out, I find. But... Ooh! 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 Okay, um... Uh, patch notes, patch notes. Copy link from Discord. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, we just had a new release from, from GGG. So, one of the new uniques as of two minutes ago. <laughs> Grace of the Goddess Prophecy Wand. Gain... I assume 15 to 25% of physical damage as fire, cold, and lightning. 
plus one to maximum number of sacred wisps, increased physical damage. Attack skills that can be... So, sacred wisps support. We can actually see, like, the real gem now. Supports attack skills that can be used with wands. Uh, support skills deal 10% increased attack damage. Support skills deal 51% less damage when used by sacred wisps. Support skill will trigger sacred wisps on hit. On sacred wisps, this skill is triggered by support... Uh -huh. Uh, Sacred Wisps a 25% chance to use the triggering skill when you fire a projectile with that skill. Oh! Oh, I thought they were minions! Well, they are minions, but they, they cast your spells too! So if you use, like, let's say, the Power Siphon of Archmage, uh, they also cast the Power Siphon of Archmage, each of them. They have, like, with this this wand, they have plus one each. So let's say you have two of these wands. That's four. You can have four wisps. Each have a chance to, to cast the same thing that you do when you cast it. Oh my gosh, I... I really want to play this now. Oh, just two, uh, two wands do, uh, um... Hate to say it again. Do Inquisitor with Battle Mage. Like, uh, well, actually not Battle Mage. That wouldn't work. But, but still, like, oh, that, ah, uh, it would be so good. Wait, could you use a Deadeye for this, maybe? Swapping. Dead eye. Okay. Skills have a chance to chain. Uh, skills fire two additional projectiles. Um, Mirage archers are not useful. Gale force. Winds. You could potentially make a dead eye with sacred wisps. A sacred wisp power siphon dead eye. Because it's all about attack damage. Though, unfortunately, the damage of bows is useless, and the fire additional arrows is useless, but, like, the damage, uh, the attack damage is good. I don't know. I assume that it has... So it has the 51% less damage at level 20. I assume it starts at level... I assume it starts at 70% less damage, and then it, then you lose 1% less damage every level going up. That, that's what I would guess. So it's just the exact same damage as your skill, less that amount for percent. So getting a level 21 Sacred Wisp would be, like, super, super, super important. That sounds so much, like, so much fun. Ugh. I've been wanting to do Power Siphon for a while. I don't know if there's, like, a better... Uh, I don't know if there's a better thing to use than... Deadeye or... Inquisitor. I mean, Inquisitor's usually the, the, the one of the better things to use, unfortunately. Though, it is possible that... The, uh, that just, like, dead off, like, you, actually, Scion might be good, too. But that requires you to be near things. I don't know. I don't know. This is a really weird scenario. 
You could also go, like, Trickster or Assassin or whatever. Lots of cool options. <laughs> you could accuracy stack and go Juggernaut. <laughs> Funny. Power Siphon Juggernaut. That's a... That's a trip. Yeah, you could do a Power Siphon Juggernaut. That is... That is a thing. Increase physical damage. Attack speed. I guess this would be... This is... Ah, uh, that's one hand melee weapons. I don't know, like, there's... There's some weird shit that you could do. Heck, if you want, uh... Marauder, you could, uh... Physical damage... Accuracy... Run... This way... Up... Up... You could go grab this, grab those, run across, grab these, grab these. There's a, there's a lot of things you could do. I'm very curious about this now. I I want to see if I can make a Sacred Wisp Power Siphon Juggernaut work. That sounds really fun and stupid. In any case, while this has been fun, I do need to call it. We'll have to work on the... Uh... Well, okay, hold on a second. Let me... We are going to call the stream in a moment, but... I found an arc mage. Template. Not template. Um, I don't know, I'll name it later. Power siphon. And then... I mean, I'd need to add Grace of the Goddess in manually. We don't have that or Sacred Wisp for it yet, but... If I were to do uh, Power Siphon of the Archmage. Yeah, I'll I'll figure this shit out later. Uh use sacred wisps. Okay, I'll just save that. Thanks for coming to the stream. Always appreciate it. Always nice to see people. We'll still be playing a bit of power world, but we're gonna be getting back into Path of Exile soon. So, for everyone who's here and has been here, thank you so much. I appreciate you seeing me on my debut as a VTuber. <laughs> and I hope everyone has a great night. More videos coming out on the channel every day, five days a week, on at Black Hat Studio. And this stream will be posted on at Black Hat Streams coming out soon. No problem. Feel free to come in and ask questions whenever you feel like it. I'll try to answer if I have time. Have a good night, everyone. I will see you on Thursday for our regular scheduled stream at 2 p.m. PST, 5 p.m. EST. Thank you so much. Have a good night.